Um, talking about it being Sunday and in the morning we have our coffee. We're gonna play some D and D. That's why, because we're live. Hey, how are you doing out there, internet? <laughs> Thank you, all, everybody in the chat, for joining us on our alternate morning gameplay for Shadow Watch. Last yesterday we had a we had a, a small hiccup in the plan. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's it's okay. okay. Camp Gak has benefited. Indeed. Yes. Depending yes. on your point of view. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Very well said, yeah. Or we should post something in that general chat saying, hey, we're live. Come watch. Because, you know. Get your own back? Certainly won't no. be any random encounters. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think we want to do that because then all of a sudden we'll have a uh, certain influx of wild magics, which we may avoid today. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> JCLC, how you doing this morning? Yep, Sunday D and D. I I, I kind of like Sunday D and D. Kind of like the Sunday D and D. Mr. Chelly, we're at ten on Saturdays. We had to move it to Sunday, so we moved it to eleven. Plus, yep. with daylight savings time, it was well needed for those of <laughs> us in the in the states. Well, yeah, yeah, that and you know. If you were watching last night's episode of Challenge Accepted, uh, we ran a little over as well because had to get a really good cliffhanger, which I think I achieved by the fact they found, they they were attacked by an, uh, attacked by an org, and it turns out the org was a bounty hunter who had a contract to hunt down a half elf. But unfortunately, the person reading the note doesn't it only base, uh, has a basic understanding of the orc language and the contract. So that was our cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> My word. So I'm worried about our cliffhanger. Well, thankfully, your last cliffhanger didn't leave you literally over the cliff. Uh, cliff just yeah. camping no, no, next no. to the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, no, fortunately, fortunately we made it down the cliff. Now we're just on the lower portion, which could be even worse. I don't know. Did you just start? I thought you guys, if I remember, you guys were resting before you started your descent. Actually, we had made the descent and we were resting at the bottom. Okay. I forgot I've slept once or twice. Because we, we had done the rope of climbing and the... Well, you, were, yeah, you guys were down. planning, but since you had the mic in is there at the, in the, in the, in the garden, yeah, it well, was, let's like camp that. next to the garden, let's camp there because they'll still be there to kind of keep some watch. You have no idea what's at the bottom I'll of buy the that. descent. So... <laughs> That's actually true. I'm looking at my notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got ahead of myself there. That's it's okay, so but now uh, with that, good morning everybody out there on the internet. Thank you for joining us for Shadow Watch today, live D and D play. Um, this is our alternate day. Um, big shout out and thank you to Sirenscape for all the background music and soundboards. We have these wonderful underdark sounds that we will be listening to. So hopefully it's all enjoyable. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud. Um. And of course, thank you to my cast for, you know, deciding to spend Sunday morning with us instead of Saturday morning. Woo, woo, chicka, chicka, woo, woo. Um, it's all good. It's d and what we like. Yeah, it works. It works. A um, couple other scheduling notes. Obviously, we're not doing Sunday with Scoob because we're going to play D&D &D instead versus painting. That's cool. Uh, Tuesday is still going to be uh, Scuba and the Rye, our weekly podcast. We record at 9 p.m. Eastern over on our YouTube channel. Uh, next weekend, uh, Saturday will be, won't be any D and D games because I have a seminar that I will be attending. I'm not sure how long that'll be. And I'm not sure how, and there'll be some work I know I'm going to need to get started afterwards while the iron hitting, hitting the iron while it's hot, so to speak. But next Sunday, we're all in agreement on this, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Next oh, yeah. Sunday, oh, yeah. we will again be doing shadow watch. So... <laughs> Two weeks in a row, Sunday morning shadow watch. <laughs> so, see how much fun that is. Um, so with that, that's the thing. So, uh, we'll kind of move forward from there. Um, bringing it in, uh, recapping last session. Uh, the you guys had gone up into the Mikeated. Uh, yes. Eleven or ten next week. Uh. Uh. 11 a.m. again. 
That that's good. That'll be good for that's good. That's good, everybody. We just repeat what we're doing now. Cool. Johnny? It's all good for me. I'm with it. Long as, as long as as long as Mrs. Shragnaz is good, we're good. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You'll never see the bruises if she isn't. <laughs> we will know. Yeah. We'll get in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It'll be fine. That might it's... be a little cross with you. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, she she is being well prompted, and it it has been all okay. I have my whole pass for next Sunday. Nice, nice. That's awesome. All right, with that, bring it bring it back again. Recapping, uh, you guys had uh, you guys had traveled up to the Garden Loft, which is where the Mykonid Colony is at. Um, in the in that Mykonid Colony, you met the uh, leader of the of the colony, and had basically been told that they're having they he has the item. And I, the item that you're looking for, but he needs something from you. Basically, he needs you to go and, and find a group of mind of uh, illithid or mind flares that have taken up residence in in the in the region and had been infecting his people with uh, some type of poison um, in the water supply, airborne that kind of thing. So needs to find a way to address that. Um, and as a kind of as a courtesy showed you guys a path through the loft to another one of these massive uh, stairwells that descend down into the city proper uh, knowing that you're going to have to then descend below the city proper to find the find the mind flares but you're still going to have to travel some distance through a, a section of the city you have not had the experience of, of seeing yet um, you guys had traveled over and made camp for the edge of one of these stairwells, seeing that the stairwell is partially collapsed in its 1500 foot descent. After making a plan for how to descend the stairwell, uh, decided to set up camp with the uh, Mykonid guide still offering a little bit of a watch uh, while you guys took some rest. Uh, coming up on the, the following day and you're well rested and um, ready to make your descent. How is, how the day is yours? How do you want to get started? Do we have a bard say, that can sing free falling? Well, no, but I was going to cannonball off the top and just sort of say, see you at the bottom, but I realize that's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> We're practically gods. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think what we discussed last time, wasn't it, was that we can't just drop directly to the bottom in one go, because otherwise I could cast Featherfall, but obviously there are platforms and, and sections in between, so I think uh, as an area was, well, as we were discussing last week, I think we all just kind of get to it, was the rope stuff of doing section at a time, so... It's there as backup. Because a certain member of the party is scared of flying spiders, anything outside of the norm... Anything else I can think she's scared of? <sighs> Everything. What you talk about? Well, just because Cavalus has a few issues, it goes, oh, okay, so we can't do this, we can't do this, can't do this. Okay, right, we can just throw her off the top. She stands there, puts her hands on her hips, and looks at you. You're just as big as I am. You're telling me you're not scared of spiders and, and all these other things? Um. Um. Can you like a spell slot left on that? So it's gonna be a day. <laughs> oh, Sister, she kind of grumbles and starts getting her pack together and, and, and her client and assessing, uh, making sure everything's everything's tied tight and and cinched down for for the descent. Go ahead and uh, give her my rope of climbing so that she can use that. Okay. <clears throat> oh boy uh, I wish some of my creatures from the bag of tricks could fly but they can't so I guess we just climb carefully and so it's all cavalry no air core <laughs> <laughs> yes 
Shrag gets out his wand and just sort of like taps it against your teeth for a couple of seconds and it's like mm, maybe later. Yes, we need drag like buttering planning. I know. We do not need fireball yet. <laughs> oh no no no. That's this and he holds up the ring. Because that's got the fireball. This got all the creepy things in. Alright, well shall we get started? Good roll. Rock and roll. Alrighty. So the plan is uh a couple of you are going to fly down on brooms two by two. And Cabness is going to descend uh via via ropes and climbing. I'm going Just... to remain close to Cabless on my broom in case something goes wrong. I will try to catch her. Alright. She, uh, she 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 as talking with y'all, she's like, I got an idea. And she uh, ties a safety line to herself and hands you, hands you the other end so you could tie it onto your broom. Just I'll in case she does waist. slip and fall, it's not a terrible fall. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's there's enough space in these um, <clears throat> stairwells that both brooms could go down essentially at the same pace as Cabalus's climb, correct? Yes. Uh, because of the nature of the stairwell, because it's, it's a large spiral that goes up, the sections kind of collapse in, so you get a little bit of a, a kind of a wrap around uh, to break and then work your way down. Yeah, right. so we could we could conceivably just go down essentially along with her to make yeah. sure that everything goes smoothly. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you as you guys uh, continue start to do your descent, um, you get about you get a few hundred feet down. And Obsidian, go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Um, 16. I will... 16, you say? 16. How many creatures did I just call? <laughs> it's fine. Um, as you're descending... Uh, and you guys take you guys hit another platform and you're getting ready to, to descend again. You notice there's a there's a small little glint uh, because of the crystals and their nat and the natural light and the lichens. You see something that kind of reflects that light a little bit. You what go over this? and investigate and you find a vial with a liquid inside. Ooh, Ooh what is this? Hey, Shraggy, can you identify up? for me? Okay, chuck it across. I'll have a look. Uh, it, I'm, no, I'm not throwing. I'm gonna. <laughs> 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 It'll end up as liquid on the ground. <laughs> Shrag's just gonna stare back at you. His face is not gonna twitch an inch. He's just gonna stare at you with the smile on his face. He's like, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take a look on the way down. Um. You see, so did you give him the, the potion or are you still looking at it? I gave it to him for identify. Yep. Ah, okay. You know, Shrag, when you when he take the vial and you kind of look at it, it's a very thick, syrupy type of, uh, of liquid inside. Okay. Are we it's having got pancakes? A it's got kind of a little, kind of a, 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 a rust type tinge to it. Actually, for the um, the speed of now, I can actually cast cast a ritual as um, it's normal casting time. So I'm basically going to run down my detect magic and identify and stuff. I'm just going to get it all done. Okay, uh, take a little break to do that, and it is a potion of invulnerability. As a gift from the tricksters. That's a good one. Excellent. I'll hand it back to Shrag and go. Oh, my hatch keep your ass out of the fire for once. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this you know potion. Me, I'm always in trouble. For one minute after you drink this potion, you have resistance to all damage. The potion syrupy liquid looks like liquefied iron. Ooh. And we have a Mycodid fight coming. That's going to be very useful. 
Thank no, you, we don't Vixen. Have a, a Mykonid fight coming. We have an Illithid fight coming. Oh, that's right. Illithid. That's what I'm <laughs> player. Much worse. <laughs> it is way too early. The, the brain suckers coffee. are coming after you. You're going to need that invulnerability. It also depends how well we do this mission because we might still have a Mykonid fight afterwards if we don't do particularly <laughs> well. <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> I'm foreshadowing. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Okay. Continuing the descent uh, takes uh, after a few, after several more, after a few more hours, you uh, come down to the base of the stairwell, and as you're as you kind of survey around the base of the stairwell, you see that roughly half half of it's collapsed. Of course, as you, you were watching, so. The half that you come down on, you notice there is, a, there's a two paths that lead out. One is leading north. The other one is leading, uh, is kind of a northwest. The other one is leading more of a southwest. Cabalus kind of looks at her map and her notes and, so, and points to the southwestern uh, entrant, uh, entry. It says that's probably our best bet to keep, to try and find the next set of stairwells that lead down. I'm sorry, which where, which direction was the other one? Leading northwest. Okay. He says uh, that area is pro is is leading toward uh, the leading toward the lake, a little closer to the lake, as well as an area where they have reports of a contingency of of dark elves that have taken up residence. Ooh, interesting. Okay. I think uh, Cablus has led us pretty well so far, so I think we should probably follow her direction. Yeah, but I do want to ask how about how far she thinks it is to where we're going. She's looking at her map, and so it's like, well, to be fair, this 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 map is a few years old because we don't okay. normally travel this far west. Um, but based on some of some of our some of our reports, it looks like um, probably we have to. It, depending on the route we take, it could we could be going through probably four, maybe five different districts to get okay. to one of the stairwells. There's apparently two. There's a there's two stairwells that are fairly close to each other, and they both lead down. So it's the closer one is about five districts. The further one is more like seven or eight, depending on the path. <clears throat> okay. So I'd like to tell her, you know, when things start to get hairy, probably not the right word to use, but. Um, she looks at you, kind of cocks an eyebrow. When, if there starts to become a lot of battle and we need to get separated, this should be our fallback rendezvous point so if we get separated you make your way here and when it's safe we'll get we'll meet you back here kind of at this road split okay right here at the uh right yeah. here at the at the stairwell yeah okay and if i get back how long should i wait for you uh to honestly i would say it depends on how far in we get if it's if it's if we get separated right away you probably want to wait a while if we're a few days into our travels, you know, maybe a couple days, I'll give her some rations to hold her over if she needs for a few she, days. She, 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 she politely denies this. You know, she's, she got her rations and whatnot. Yeah. So it's, all right. A couple of days. We'll see how it, we'll see how it goes and see how crazy it gets. Yeah. Yeah. I just, if you have to fall back, we understand. And I just, we want to have a rendezvous point already planned out. Yes, I'll thank you. She accepts. She understands, and she tells you, "Like I'll come back here, and I'll wait as long as it's safe. If it's not safe, then absolutely." She looks at her map and kind of looks and sees, like, "Okay, we're about ten districts back to the." Looks up the stairwell and yeah. <laughs> She's not hopefully, liking the idea of trying to travel back by herself. <laughs> but, well, hopefully it won't come to that. We we are not certainly planning on all dying, but um, you know that is fair. So coming into this uh, coming into this district, uh, you can see it looks 
um, the way the paths are kind of winding and whatever and what she looks, looks like it's another one of these residential areas um, and as you come as you kind of progress through after a little bit you come to a crossroad where one path kind of leads uh, east uh, southeast and the other one is kind of moving more of a, a, a westerly track um, she's looking at it she kind of and she points to the southeastern or southwest southeastern track and while you guys are making this uh journey you're hearing sounds you're hearing um a, you, as you pass by some of the dom some of the areas it it almost sounds like there's gibbering and shouting and babbling uh from different points you can't quite get a fix on where it is and it's just it's just kind of like constant hearing this kind of uh, of of uh, noise. I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, you've got a month. World. Uh oh. So wisdom saving throws. Oh, jeez. Oh, I failed. You get. Uh, six. <laughs> do we do we get the bonuses for being near an Arian still? Does an Arian you... have an aura that affects wisdom saving throws? It uh, he has an aura that affects all saving throws. Okay. So I have so a nine. Plus plus three plus three on saves. Okay. <laughs> it ain't gonna help. No, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of feeling the same way this morning. Well, that's unexpected. <laughs> um, Mine's a 19. 19? Awesome. <laughs> well, body daddy you. Don't get mad at me because I succeeded and you didn't. <laughs> oh, Clark, Ooh, we're Clark's, going there. We are Clark's going there. Focus on wisdom anyway, so that's where you have the advantage. So yeah, with the Narian's bonus, I get a plus eleven, so that makes yeah. it easier to succeed. Yeah, yeah. So with the Narian's plus three, I might actually get six. That's um, yeah. You have a six. I have a nine. We are doing great this morning. Yeah, um, I'm been great. For I'm everyone doing. who got below an 11. That was uh, the bar? Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh, my. You, you, you're uh, you're going to need to track this. Is like you're going to need to give yourself a, a, a madness level of one because oh the boy. sounds are just kind of getting under your skin. Uh, Will, uh, you're I... not affected by it too much? Uh, Anari, what, you got over 11 too, right? I did, yeah. So the two of you aren't affected, but Shrag and Obsidian are just kind of... Do I notice this? You hear the sounds, but they don't affect you the same way they affect Obsidian and, and Shrag. And do I, I notice noise. Do I notice it affecting them? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, DM question. Answer. Uh, lesser restoration, would that be able to remove the madness? I'm double checking that right now because, to be fair, I didn't expect you to fail. Because uh, <laughs> it, it says, can it says disease or condition. Yes, yeah, so and then the conditions condition are blind and deaf the... and paralyzed or poison, so probably not. Um, yeah, because this count as a uh, charm or a frighten? Um, this would be a short-term madness that will affect you for the next 10 minutes. Um, okay. Does it count? I guess I wouldn't know if this counts as a charm or a frighten, so I'm just going to try this. Uh, I will hold out my holy symbol and a like soft warm light spreads out from us in a 20 foot radius sphere and I cast calm emotions which can suppress any effect causing a target to be charmed or frightened. I don't know if this counts. Yes, calm emotions will su will suppress uh, madness. Okay. How long does, does it, it last? It doesn't make it go away, but it. Uh, I guess it only lasts a minute. 
So okay. I will wait to cast this uh, if we are if we get into like a fight. All right. So I need uh, Obsidian to give me a D hundred roll, and I need Shrag to give me a D hundred roll. Okay. Oh, question geez. for you, Scoob. Um, Answer. There is no maddening on no conditions called maddening on D and D Beyond. What's the closest thing to it? Just so. Um, I don't think madness is it, but I don't think they're, I think it's one of those. You just have to make a personal note because okay. this, this is only going to affect you for the next 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Hi. In all fairness, it's Shrag. Will you guys even notice the difference? <laughs> Probably not. Fair point. Fair point. See what the D100s say. Also, when did we start playing Cthulhu? <laughs> I know we're going to get into territory. I was going to say, I know we're going to get with tentacle faces, but it's just like, hang on, whoa, 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 there's too much of a crossover. Don't like it. I was scary, Scoob. <laughs> D100 roll is a 20, Scoob. You got a 20. I got a 20. Uh, Thanks, a character Gar. retreats D &D into his or her mind and becomes paralyzed. The effect ends if the character takes any damage. So the you you're walking and you did the sounds just get to the point you just freeze in 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 in, in, in kind of kind of like kind of like you kind of covering your head and just it's like you're trying to get it to just stop. Trag, what do you get? I, I've got a twenty eight. Twenty eight. Yeah, what's it coming? What's it coming? Uh, your character, you become incapacitated and you spend the next 10 minutes in a combination of screaming, laughing, or weeping. Oh, so I have literally just gone full Joker then. Yes, literally. Oh, that's going to be loud. So when uh, when Anarian all the freezes, before. when Anarian freezes, or excuse me, when uh, Obsidian freezes, Anarian's going to walk over to him and say, knock that off and slap him. Roll, unarmed an unarmed, roll an attack with an unarmed strike. Unarmed strike. <laughs> That's going to be a uh, 25 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Uh, damage is going to be five points. Ow! <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? Because paralyzed, uh, a creature was paralyzed, you actually have advantage on attack rolls against him. Does that make an automatic critical? <laughs> well, <laughs> you, so you want me to see if it is going to be a crit i'm letting you know and i'm letting the audience know in case they come across somebody who is, has the paralyzed so. condition paralyzed creature is incapacitated and it can't move or speak the creature automatically fails strength or dexterity saving throws <laughs> attack rolls against the creature have an advantage any any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet uh-oh so it was a crit. <laughs> it was a crit, oh, and it's an unarmed strike. <laughs> so oh unarmed... my, that's funny. So he takes 10, 10, points, 10 points of damage, which then Arnarian wow. will lay on hands and heal. So, so I will, was it a I slap take... or was it a punch? No, it was a slap. I was <laughs> slapping him. Backhand um, or front hand? <laughs> let me let me think let me think about that for a second <laughs> I mean, no, and Aryan and obsidian have been through many an adventure together so i don't think he'd get the backhand he'll get the bop to the back of the head oh, knock it off a gib slap gotcha <laughs> a gib slap well stated or, or as we said okay. UK here, and I then i'll uh i'll go ahead and take uh 10 points off my uh lay on hands so that he gets it healed back all right, so Will, obviously you're next to Shrag as he starts to weep, laugh, uh, scream. I mean, he, he just... Get nothing out of the ordinary then. <laughs> yeah, so I, we start hearing this sound and suddenly my two companions fall to the ground, one of them laughing and crying all at the same time. And I'm like, oh God, I'm like looking around like, oh God, what do I do? And then I see that Anarian slaps Obsidian and it works and I try it on Shrag. <laughs> Incapacitated creature oh, okay. can't take actions or reactions. So yeah, go ahead, roll that unarmed strike. Okay. I am much weaker than he is, don't worry. Well, that's okay. It, it's not I advantage this, or I'm auto gonna... crit. It's literally just gonna hit him. 
if I see her doing this, if it doesn't, if her doesn't doesn't work, I'm gonna volunteer for the next strike. That's a twenty-two to hit. I rolled a sixteen and a nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> you take one point of damage, Shrag. As you come off and come over and hit Shrag, he for a moment stops, looks at you, and just starts laughing. <laughs> And it just <laughs> laughing and moving into it's, it's moving into again that whole cycle of you know a rock fall you hear a rock fall in the distance he starts crying you hear more <laughs> voices he starts screaming I mean he's just back and forth on that it didn't work it didn't work wah, wah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Shreddy, it's okay, Shrek. It's all right. It's okay. Don't cry. Stop laughing. Your laugh is really creepy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to do this for a full 10 minutes. It's fine. I have no idea what to do. You try uh, role playing it. <laughs> I know. I got the easy one. I can't. Can't move. <laughs> Uh, you guys continue to kind of walk along, or are you going to wait there until the until things kind of go quiet? Based, based on the area that we're in and the dangers that I think we see coming, I think we're probably going to want to hunker down and not we're not advance while he's uh, being maniacal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Kind of searching through a couple of play, a couple of different spots, you find one that you can kind of sit down and hunker down in. And then as the time pass, as the next uh, 10, 15 minutes pass, uh, Shrag all of a sudden kind of regains control of his of his faculties and is calmer, quieter. Um, combination of like tears running down his face from all the crying and the laughing and. He takes a moment so as to recompose himself to the best of his abilities. The whole time he was freaking out, I was just kind of like half hugging him, like patting his back, like just, it's okay, it's okay. Just lost for what to do. I'm a bear. Are you all right? Thank you. Breathe, um... breathe Shaggy. Shraggy, not Shaggy. That's a different series. <laughs> Are you all right? I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. That that was ah. Mm. It happened after that horrible sound happened. So I think it had something to do with that. Yeah, don't want to do that again. No. Oh. So laugh. I couldn't move. Yeah, obsidian fell over. <laughs> okay, no, no, that's fine. That was just funny. Luckily. Anarian and I were okay. Can you imagine if that happened to all of us? That would definitely have been a problem. It could be very bad. The, what if you're on the brooms flying and it happened? That's a long way down. It's a long way down. Tablis is okay, right? We want to obviously have checked on her and she's fine. Oh, Yeah. Yep. She was okay. fine. I totally forgot okay. to roll her check, but yeah, I got a 12 on the die, so I know she passed her wisdom save. <laughs> okay, so as we oh, travel, no. as we continue traveling, I'm going to keep a spell prepared in case we start hearing that sound again. Oh, the sound hasn't stopped. Oh, okay. The entire this entire this entire time effect. in this immediate area, you are here. This whole in this whole kind of in the for for in this district. Yeah. You, everywhere you go, you're hearing these these sounds. Picture like you know those those bits where it's like if you can picture you're in an old school kind of mental asylum. Yeah. And you hear down the hallways behind the doors the screaming, the laughing the crying but you can't pinpoint its exact source but it's just you're constantly hearing it but we don't have to make another save no you've made your okay. save okay 
What about the two of us that didn't make the save? You still have a madness level of one, which means you get hit with more madness, your level goes up, and therefore the madness becomes more evasive. Oh, cool. Okay, so madness level one, and we gotta figure out how to get rid of the madness level one. Okay. Oh, uh, man. Okay. Let's see here. But we wouldn't that necessarily know that, right? That was a saving throw, not a check, right? Say again, Will? That was a saving throw, not a check, right? Yeah, that was a wisdom saving throw you had to make. Okay. Sorry, I'm just, like, racking my brain of what spells I have that can help with wisdom saving throws. All of them only last a minute. I was going to say, as long as they stay within my aura, they'll get the plus three, but... We are that doesn't help snuggling on up to an Aryan today. <laughs> yeah. Lincoln are staying close. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just feel a little wiser when I'm around you, Anarian. It's nice. Feel safer. <laughs> All right. Well, let's figure out what's down there. So as you're as you uh, kind of come out and start to uh, continue along this path, um, you hear in one of the kind of side caverns a um, but definitely for you'll see your pass. Who's whose passive is above twenty again? Mine is twenty. Twenty twenty obsidian. Three. Eighteen. So I'm close. Craig. Fourteen. Okay. So as uh, going through Will and Anari, because, you know, it's kind of, uh, and A, because you're passing the saves, and B, because your, your passive perceptions are high enough, you hear something else in the screaming, a different kind of scream, and the sound, and what sounds like um, weapons, weapon attacks. Can I determine the direction? Uh, it's coming from your left into one of these uh, kind of uh, ha uh, area, one of these kind of larger residential type of conglomerates, kind of like a apartment a apartment buildings, several several buildings, kind of in a large cavern. As you go in and kind of peer in, uh, you're hearing there's that sound coming in the distance, probably about sixty to hundred feet away. It's just outside your vision, but so you're hearing you're hearing some scream. You're hearing some. You're hearing a few screams. You're hearing some what sounds like weapon swords swords swinging through. You're hearing what sounds like uh cro like crossbow bolt crossbow strings. So I'll uh, I'll let the party know uh, there's combat to the left. Cool. We'll probably send that in as a given fact that we probably want to avoid combat. We don't get involved in too much too early, so oh. probably send that in ahead to sort of float and just peer around and see what that's actually happening. Also, Shrag, you got the 120, so you would be able to see if you go ahead and roll an active perception. Okie dokie. Oh, this is how it's going to be today. Okay, so I've gone from a natural one to a natural 20. Okay, that's 24 in total, not 20. Okay. So as Anari kind of points you in that direction to look, and you send Nat forward, you look, you see what appears to be uh, eight Dark Elves fighting what appear to be nothing. And as you look closer, you see that there are some parts of the dark that are moving. A couple of them have enveloped a couple of the dark elves and then they collapse to the ground and they move on to other to other dark elves as they're fighting and you get a moment of recollection of of recollection oh no that those appear to be shadows yep. that the drow are the dark elves are fighting cool cool this went so well last time let's uh, avoid the shadows shall we yeah, based on what Nat sees, um, Shrag will relate it to others, and the fact that they're still fighting, maybe if we hurry past, they'll still be engaged with each other and we can get past and move on. Yep. I know Anarian doesn't like having someone behind us, but if we move on, then they're not even aware of us. Yeah. 
I'll make an exception in this case and let the drow deal with it. Go ahead and roll your stealths as you uh, kind of get that. Yep. Got to go. <laughs> oh, my word. That's going to be a natural 20 and a 4. So that's going to be a 30 on my stealth check. Jeez. What is happening today? Oh, God. Nat 20 plus 10 for 30. We really don't That's all like. 20, God, so. 27 for an Aryan. Uh, I got a dirty 20 plus 10 for 30. Nice. So you all kind of, and you see at one point, Cablus uh, uh, almost trips, but quick act, quick thinking, and kind of keep her from making too much noise. And you guys all kind of scoot past with them. None being the wiser. You can see that uh, Will keeps looking back at the the battle, just like torn. She's she wants to go help, but she knows that she needs to just keep going this way, and she doesn't want to endanger her friends. But she's like, <sighs> Drow are not our friends either. Neither were the dirt or just saying you never know who a friend who might be a friend. Strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. That's cheesy. <laughs> it saved my life once, so I try not to uh, turn it down when I can. Trag looks up in a slightly confused manner and say, "Not many people say the opposite thing about me." Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Just, just kind of shakes her head. It's like, but uh, I, was, got... I was waiting. I was waiting for Will to put on the cardigan and start singing "Won't You Be My Neighbor," but <laughs> <laughs> it didn't come out. <laughs> oh, so wholesome. So as, as you're as you come come around and get some distance away, you come to a point where the where the path again kind of forks. It was kind of natural crossroads. Uh, one path is continuing straight into the next district and to the east. Uh, then there's another part that turns sharply to the southwest and leads to another set and will, would be still within this district, but leading to another point to connect with a with a potential with a potentially different district. Um, so it's kind of a Kind of a choice. Do you want to keep going straight into the next district, or do you want to stay in this district a little longer and try and find a different, different path to another district? I say we beeline it as fast as we can through all these districts. Say, Cablus, you know where we're going. Let's get there. Well, both ways can go south. It's just, do we want to? Do we want it's, <laughs> to? It's really kind which, of a choice. It's like we, which is the quickest route? Um. Probably heading, taking this one that's heading west and then south All and right, staying, staying in this district a little bit longer. <laughs> then we need to, I think we need to try to expedite and use the quickest route possible. Yep. Should I, should I go look up and go south? <laughs> there are flat clouds, right? Everywhere can go south. It normally does. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong, right, Shraggy? <laughs> in the Underdark, all paths lead south. That's fair. You'll notice, you'll notice that Shrag is actually staying incredibly close to Nerin. It's like the like, occasion keeps on like bumping into his legs. He's just like he's not leaving his side. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're walking next to a dog and they're not paying attention to where they're going and they just keep running into you. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he had his choice, it'd be like a, a scene from Star Wars with like the Yoda bit. <laughs> <laughs> We just Alrighty. need to make you a little carrier. Oh no, that's an idea. <laughs> so as you uh, take that path south uh, a little for for a little bit, you come to yet another crossroads. This crossroad has the path uh, turning north and another path that is leading south. Uh, turning to the southern path, you cross into the next district. <clears throat> and 
And as you cross into this district, you notice that it's the paths. The previous, a lot of the previous districts you guys have been walking through, there are a lot of offshoots that lead into what is probably with our different type of residential areas. This one, as you come in, there aren't as many offshoots, but there are a lot more large, larger caverns. Gives you the idea that this is probably more, that these areas are more of like a warehouse or meeting hall type spaces. So there's a lot more op a lot more open area as you as you cross. Um and it it's fairly straightforward. You go th you're going through um <clears throat> and peeps the creeps and the peeps. I think that was mine. Okay. I don't know how to mute it temporarily. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. Right, right mouse click. Mine too. Got mine off. It's distracting, you know? Anyways. It does. <laughs> so, as you guys uh, progress through, um, who's, who, who's in the lead? <laughs> I guess an Aryan is based on okay. the fact that everybody's clustered around. We're, there's no lead. We're literally in a circle around an Aryan. There's, there's okay. nobody in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not the best place to be for Fireball, but there again, there's no good place say, to be for Fireball. <laughs> we are a Fireball magnet right now, absolutely. Yes, yeah. and we're also very Wizard of Oz right now. I was going to say, AoE spells probably not in our best interest at the moment. Yeah, gotta right. love traveling in a kill cluster. Mm. But it's better than madness, maybe. <laughs> I already have that, thank you very much. Yeah, we yeah, don't need we'll, any more of that. <laughs> we'll work on taking care of that shortly. Um, so as, you, as you're progressing through, you come to a first kind of, um, kind of a meeting hall area. Uh, seems fairly wide. Um, ceiling is is probably about fifteen feet in the air. As you're as you're progress through, um, it's fairly open. Um, but you see little pockets of of what it, of of uh, what appears to be some kind of viscous liquid lying in in various spots. And as you cross through, Anara, you get a sense. That something is something's coming. Well, you get the sense a split second later, and you kind of get and you get the quick scatter. And I need you all to make dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Plus three. Ooh. Yeah, as long as they're within ten feet, you'll get the plus three. I mean, see these wow. on the Oh, from really? 25. Okay. 10 oh. total, <laughs> including all the things. Has Drag? somebody been messing with D&D &D Beyond? That's now a natural <laughs> one, two natural 20s, and back to a natural one again. It's, There's numbers it's in between. she who shall not be named. Apparently, they have integrated her now with D&D <laughs> &D Beyond rolls. Yep, I'm going back to my dice. <laughs> um, so... Ooh. With the bonus, that's still a 12. Okay. Anari? Uh, that would be a 10. Okay. So, Obsidian's nimble, cat-line, feline uh, reflexes darts out of the way. Shrag jumps out of the way as well. Will and Anari, you guys just barely get out of the way. Poor Cavless. She doesn't move fast enough. And uh -oh. this blob of like viscous liquid drops on her and you hear her start to scream and you see you you hear that sound of burning and dissolving like an acid is dissolving and she is trying frantically to start getting the getting the stuff off of her is it a pudding it is a it is Give me a nature check. Nature. Can we all have a... I was going to say, do we all have a go or just... You all can take a go at it. Please 17. help. 17. Cool. 
nine. Man. <laughs> yeah, I rolled 13, which given the dice roll so far, it's 1, 20, 20, 1, 13. Why does that not surprise me? Yeah, and between me, Obsidian, and Anarian, we just rolled a 9, a 10, and 11. <laughs> She's definitely loaded. She's gone. She's gone up the coast stream. Um, that's it. That's it. Back to dice. So, Back to so, physical dice. Back to my dice. <laughs> Track. <laughs> You, yeah. it, it's not a pudding or an ooze or anything. It is something a lot simpler. It is it is a slime, a natural yeah. forming kind of hazard that uh, is attracted to light to, to living objects, and will drop on from and drop on from the, the ceilings, the walls, and will move. But it, it doesn't have the same level of, of complexity that like an ooze or a pudding has. And she has it. She's already. She's taken a little bit of, little bit of acid damage already. Can and I... is trying to, trying to get, uh, get her stuff, get get this stuff off of her. Cool. So I will seeing this and knowing roughly what's happened, the fact that she got this stuff on her, I'll whip out and I'll cast Prestige Station to try and sort of clean off what I can from her. Okay. Well, and she's go ahead not and roll much more than. <laughs> and roll the D hundred. Yes, roll the D hundred. Okay, so we're doing prestidigitation. The slime has dropped, and I rolled an eighty nine. Oh no! Is this wild magic? Yep. Yes. Oh, oh no, catalyst! Please give me a fireball. It's fine. The fireball that goes off. I, I think the fireball is seven and eight, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Shrag, so Shrag, you ca you 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 real quick instinctually cast the prestidigitation. It pulls the uh, pulls the slime off of Cablis. Uh, her backpack, her clothes, her weapons are all kind of smoking um, a bit. Uh, they've all taken damage and are degraded a little bit. He's taken a little bit of damage, and as everybody goes to look back at Shrag. You see, he's not there because he's turned himself invisible again. Shraggy, <laughs> once more. Shrag. Shraggy. Now, oh, where'd he go? He was grabbing my leg a minute ago. Where'd he go? I'm here. Hear him. Well, you, you guys don't mess in my head. All right, there's bad enough as this morning. What do you, you mean? The... Shraggy, we don't. You're not here. We don't see you. Are you on oh. the ceiling? Where I'll, did you uh... go? <laughs> Is it like? You guys find Wrong. Shrag. I'm gonna go check on Cablis, and I'll go check on Cablis. How badly is she injured? Uh, you you see some some surface acid burns essentially, okay. um, and her she like the uh, the hilt on her on her knife is, is smoldering and kind of pitted from the acid burn. Anything uh, wood and whatnot has also been kind of pitted and burned a bit. I'll ask her if she needs any healing. It probably help. All right. I hate that stuff. I'm. Uh, I'll do lay on hands. Yeah. Um. From uh, what only, I see, how how badly damaged would she be? She only needs like five hit points. All right, I'll give her five then. Yeah, that'll bring her back up. Uh, she goes to assess her dagger and whatever, and it's the hilt is just just kind of crumbling crumbling away. Lost its de degrity and then oh boy. When Shrag knocks on my leg, I know he's there. I will walk over to Cablis and take a little potion bottle out of my bag and say, "Here, I think I think you need this." And I give her my one single regular potion of healing, <laughs> which she she accepts and puts in her bag. Um, does she wear any kind of armor? Uh, she has a kind of a more or less like a studded leather. How is did that get any damage from the acid? Yeah, it's now just leather armor. It's lost the studs. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it's a it's a it's a bit bit kind of singed, but it's not it's not in as much damage as like anything metal or wood. Okay, so I'll go over to her and hand her uh, my dagger. And give she it accepts, her. and for her, for her, it's a little bit bigger than what she's used to seeing. It's almost like a, it's kind of, kind of almost like you know Frodo when he got Sting. It was like, oh, that's a letter, letter opener. Well, for him, it's a sword. So <laughs> <laughs> she I accepts it. A, I have a hand axe as well. If you need another weapon, I never use it. She's, 
I'll think I'll be good for here. Just let's avoid that stuff. Let's let's do that. <laughs> good call. And as you kind of look and the see, ceiling. there are several pockets of it throughout this throughout this area. Now, now that we kind of know what it is, we'll work on avoiding those spots. Yep. Okay. I'll be keeping an eye out on the ceiling up above us. Although I don't know if I'm the best one to do that because I have the shortest vision. Well, the ceiling's only about 15 feet. Okay, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so now that you geez. all know, now that you know, now that you know that, go ahead and uh, give me uh, investigation checks. Okay. They say knowing is half the battle. Ten. We're still using this. Okay. Oh yeah, 20, dice out. Twenty-one for uh, an Aryan. Okay. Yeah, this I, is effectively I may break a out group my skill check. So I may break out my 14. physical dice at the uh, at the break. Fourteen, twenty-one. Will eighteen. All right, Shraggy. Ten. <laughs> and that's three three out of four successes. We're 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 good. We're good. You're you're able to kind of as a group kind of collectively look and see and. Pick your path through this uh, where this this area. As you come out through it, you see uh, the path continues south. There's a little offshoot uh, that leads to the north. Obviously, you're ignoring that. You come into the next room uh, or the next big kind of large structure. This one, the ceiling is about 20 feet high. Um, as you kind of survey it uh, and move through Shrag, you can see just on the edge of your vision. It looks like there's a, a path that leads east or path that leads west. Um, there looks like there's a path that leads south. Um, and then uh, as you're passing, you see there's like these two little offshoot rooms and then there's a path uh, leading east. Um, the uh, the as you're, as you're going again, you're kind of catching some uh, Anari again with uh, and will kind of catch that something seems a little amiss. And as you have Shrag kind of scan the room, uh, you notice that uh, coming from the east, there is a group of creatures. Um, they look. You kind of you're seeing them it's just on the edge of you of, of Will Obsidian and Ari's vision. But Shrag, you're kind of looking at them too. It's like you see these creatures coming walking through, and they have like they're short. They're probably maybe about a halfling size, maybe a little bit maybe dwarven size. Uh, they have uh, these really kind of big heads with these large kind of fish eyes. Um, one of them is carrying a staff. A uh, few others are, are kind of circling and in in the in uh, around also and kind of around the column around the column of them are these kind of larger uh, brutish type of thick skinned uh, creatures that look kind of like uh, kind of like lizards, but their faces are, are are kind of flatter and broader, and they all and they're much they're more of a medium size. They're much larger. And they kind of start kind of coming in. Um, and then from another point, uh, the, there's another group coming from the other side. So in total from both sides of the room, east and west, coming in, uh, there's a total of 15 of these uh, fish-looking creatures and seven of these kind of larger lizard-like creatures. From what I can see, do they seem to be traveling cooperatively together, or do these larger creatures seem to be kind of like herding them along as like guards? Do they, do they um, seem to be working together, or they are? They seem to be working in, in unison. The, the uh, larger ones are, are seem to be more of kind of subservient to the fish fish ones. Uh, okay. Um, in the group to the east is the one that has the staff. The group to the west doesn't have one would carry one of these fish creatures carrying a staff. From uh, from our previous research, uh, before we came to the Underdark, would we be able to identify what these creatures are? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, your previous, go ahead and roll a history check. History. Fourteen. Um, 
The fish creatures look like a, a, ra a, sub -ra a race of creatures called Koatoa. Um, your research okay. indicates that Koatoa are certifiably crazy. Didn't we hear from the deep gnomes that the fish people had one of the items we were looking for? Yes, mm -hmm. there is uh, some of your information uh, in and indicates that there is the Poatoa colony on the on the uh, in the near the lake or inland sea. It's large enough to be either at this point. Um, there is a there's a Koatoa colony there, and they have one of the one of the items you describe you had described as being part of the shards of day. I'm going to ask Cablus if they've ever had any interactions or trade with the Koatoa. Um, she shakes her head. No, they tend to be uh, the group here tend to be uh, tend to be like uh, slavers. They tend to capture and, and enslave uh, people they believe weaker than them. From the information she has, how close are we to this inland lake or sea that uh, we were told about? You're about, you guys are about five districts away. So probably about a day, about a, about a, about a day's journey. So this, uh, depending, on, depending on what what encounters you have. So these groups wouldn't necessarily be from that same people or tribe or whatever, however they organize themselves. They don't tend to drift too far away from water, per se. Okay. Or sources of water, so there's a chance they could be part of that. But unsure of their general disposition as they're kind of patrolling. It looks like there are two patrols that are coming together in this large space with you guys essentially trapped in the center. Is there anywhere we could potentially hide or get to or do we think there's a good chance they would have already seen us? Um, they haven't seen you yet. You have a little bit of, you have a, you have a, you have a few moments to try and determine how you want to get out, get out if you want to avoid a fight. Are there... How high is the ceiling? The ceiling's about 20 feet. I was going to ask, is there, it, what type of environment are there places to hide or is it just pretty much open ground? It's, there's a few, there's a few clumps of rock from the ceiling that had, from parts of the ceiling that had collapsed, which, ex, which are, which don't really extend the height of the ceiling too much. Um, but there's, so there's some rubble and debris large enough, uh, to kind of hide behind and try to avoid and try to use those as cover to move from spot to spot to spot. Cool. I uh, really... Go ahead. I was going to say I'll use Mold Earth as a to actually take some of that rubble and make it into very quickly more of a substantial area to hide behind. Okay. I, I'd really be curious to hear, hear the exchange and interchange between these two groups as they come together. I want to know what they're about. So I want to try to hide and use my Helm of Comprehend Languages to figure out what they're talking about. Okay. Will, Obsidian, what are your thoughts? Want to hide? I want to keep these guys and, on. And I'll go ahead and cast Pass Without Trace as part of this. All right. I think we should try to avoid fighting with these guys in case we have to negotiate with them. No. All right. So, Obsidian I'll, cast I'll Pass see. Without Trace. Quickly tries, trying to make some more fortifications. Quickly suggest to Cablus that she uh, disappear into the stone like she can do. She gives you a thumbs up, walks uh, walks toward a piece of stone, and just seems to just vanish. Man, I gotta learn how oh. to do that. I know. So I'm now gonna take the hide action. All right. Go ahead and uh, get your stealth checks and and, and pass without hide. trace gives the plus ten. Yes, oh, pass without trace gives you a plus ten as long as you are within thirty feet of the caster. So that'll be well, a thirty-nine. I got a thirty-nine or a nat one, so I'll take my thirty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong the advantage. I got a ten, a ten, so I'll I'll take ten plus the ten plus the other ten, so I'm on thirty. What are these dice playing? 
26. No. All right. So you guys all dart and kind of hide in some various bits of rubble and um, watch as these two groups kind of come together. Um, one of the, the one with the, the, the as they kind of meet together, uh, the one with the staff uh, kind of slams the staff on the, uh, kind of taps the staff on the ground and two of the other group kind of run forward and they kind of bow their heads a little bit to the one with the staff. Uh, the rest kind of kind of form a little circle and kind of look about. Um, you have the helm of comprehend languages on. So do I. Okay. It just stays on while we're down here because I don't know Underdark that well. Just double check something, make sure I have this right. Oatoa are crazy. This ought to be fun. I am afraid. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> as you guys are, are are looking at, you're seeing that um, the, the the group of them have like these staffs, and the staffs have what appear to be as like a, a like a crab claw on one end, as they're kind of uh, circling the perimeter. Uh, the two that uh, walk up to speak to the one with the staff, they don't appear to be carrying any weapons uh, per se, but uh, they kind of have a, a look of like wrappings on their ha on their hands and wrists. And, and as they talk, the one with the staff, the one with the staff is is kind of like a just kind of like a short staff with the top being like a globe of some type. Um, you're hearing, as you hear them talk, um, you all kind of recognize that the, the language is under common. So for Shrag and Will, it's, it's kind of like, you're getting every kind of like fourth word on, on some of that. Uh, for an Aryan shrag, you're hearing it, and you're hearing the one with the you're hearing the one with the st with the staff, ask, uh, asking them about have they found have they found anything? Is there any 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 new one any new ones for to be to be brought? Um, giving you the impression that they are searching for pe potential captives. to take back to their camp and for some kind of ritual you're not sure what um the larger creatures you kind of see are kind of just hanging out around kind of kind of sniffing and, and and looking about the uh the area um they seem to talk they seem to comment to each other but you can't but the Kotoa don't seem to pay them any mind. Um, Will and Shrag, you can't understand anything they're saying, but for Obsidian and Anari, because of your helmets, you're hearing some of them talk in a different language, as it seems like they're comparing notes on what they've seen and a kind of a general uh, disdain for how for some of the Kotoa at times. But it isn't it isn't so much like a they're gonna they're gonna rebel against it's more like you know kind of like when you complain about your boss because your boss does stupid things and since Koto tend to be a little little kind of uh crazy in their in their speech uh you hear you hear you're hearing some bombastic talking of like praise be the the serpent god this week's serpent god, or was that, or was last week the manta ray god? No, it's the serpent god this week as he slams his staff down. We must speak to the many-eyed serpent god. And they sit there and they and they're they're going back and forth, and it's like, and one of them is like, uh, sir, did you do you feel the presence? 
What presents? The 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 old the, the, the old ones are, are nearby. We should should we dwell here? What old ones? There's only the serpent god. And like the, the We saw some signs of trolls. We should probably not be here. And the one backhands him, and the one with the the the, the staff kind of slaps him. The one who spoke up is like, "Ah, be no mind. The serpent god will protect us. Come, we must find sacrifices for the serpent god." I just look at my companions, and I'm like, "I." Do an insight check, or what kind of check would be needed to try to insight is typically what? used for determining the tent, in, okay. intent, and deceit, and all of that. Okay, so then uh, what would I? I want to try to identify their the serpent, multi-eyed serpent god that he's talking about. That would be a religion check. Religion check. Okay. And let's see what we get here. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> That would be a five. Yeah, no idea. Never heard of him. Probably a good reason for that. I'm not up to speed on the Underdark deities these days. No, I don't think this one exists. The guy's crazy. <laughs> Are they just hanging out in the space or? Um, They're still bickering back and forth. I'm giving you a chance to interact instead of me. <laughs> well, we're not saying a peep and we're not moving the muscles. I was going to say, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm hiding, just trying to get as much information and intelligence as I can and uh, hope that they will move along. They, yeah. uh, they continue and then after a little while, they kind of uh, break off again and start to uh, the group that came from the West. Uh, starts to go and head uh, to the north uh, path. The one that came in from the east crosses over to go down the western path. Uh, and they kind of spread themselves out in, as a line. So as they came in, they were coming in and kind of spread out, which gave you the time to hide. You kind of watch them go. And then uh, Shrag's vision is good enough. He can kind of see when the last ones kind of walk out roughly before they lose this complete line of sight on them. You take a few more moments and then realize, okay, it's probably safe. Based on the fact that they were talking about trolls and our history with trolls in the Underdark, I have a feeling that trolls would be associated with the uh, Mind Flayers. So would I have gotten a sense from their talk of the old ones that they're talking about the Mind Flayers as the old ones? Um, roll another uh, history check. Anybody else who wants to as well as you kind of compare notes on this? Better. 17. 16. 18. 11. Okay. Uh, everybody over a 15 on this one. Um, re thinking back to your research, you know that uh, long ago, uh, the, co the, the Illithid had enslave the Koatoa. And due to generations of enslavement, the Koatoa have literally lost their minds under that under that oppression. So okay. they and so kind of connecting the dots is they might be talking about the old ones, but then again, Koatoa also a rumor to kind of make gods up as they see fit. So it could be mind flares, it could be last week's soup of the day for all you know. <laughs> Okay, but with connecting it with the trolls, I would I would tend to believe it's probably the, the yeah. That's that a that's a, that's to. a yeah. legitimate okay. logic leap on that, considering the last time you did see trolls and and mind flayers pretty close proximity. Yeah, we've we've seen when that a couple times down here now. Yeah, would our research tell us what type of creatures and mind flayer illithid is? Would would your research have told you what an illithid is? Yeah, like what type, like a uh, aberration or a celestial or a oh. fiend, or what would it would it have told us what type of a creature they are? Uh, yes. 
um, pull up that so I don't uh, screw the lore up because they're really cool lore wise. So yeah, Mind Flare is an aberration. Um, they, they're definitely not, uh, they're not of this plane. They've, typically, right. they've come from another plane. Um, they were, they kind of, they spent a lot of their history traversing the planes. So. And they're obviously very evil. Yeah, they tend to, I mean, they tend to use uh, powers of the mind, which is really kind of, which is very rare. Um, they don't use magic in the traditional sense. And f in fact, in some cases, they actually uphold, they actually reject magic and focus more on the, uh, the mental stuff. So if they reject magic, would someone using magic around them offend them? In what, in what way? Well, if they abhor it, if they don't like it, if I cast a spell in front of them, would that really turk, would that irk them? Would that, would they not care? If they don't, if they have such a distaste for it, would that bother them? Would that play mind games with them? Mm, it wouldn't play mind games with them. It would more, it would definitely be more of a, it'd be more of a zealot reaction. Okay of that and uh there are there are uh rare occasions where a illithid does learn magic and start practicing magic but they are typically shunned and pushed out of that society and they can in turn come become uh quite a more quite a powerful threat in their own right because uh most of them typically because illithids kind of work in kind of a hive kind of uh mentality and so when they're away from each other for two, when they're away from a large group, they tend to uh, get a, feel isolated and whatnot. So they'll, when they, so for those rare occasions where they pursue uh, magic, they typically take it to the extreme of finding a way to cheat death in their pursuit of magic. Even if that means allying with a crazy group of adventurers that they found in a cave in the Underdark. Rumors abound about those stories. The legendary Clarota. <laughs> Thank you. Fighting that fireball. <laughs> what about fireball? Well, it's a great negotiator. That's a, that's a way to negotiate. That is a way. <laughs> it worked with the Durgar. Certainly holds their toes to the fire. <laughs> I... Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe their tentacles to the fire? Sorry. I apologize for that. No, you're fine. Shrek met an illicit once. How does that grab you? <laughs> Maybe that's what's wrong with Shraggy. He got away, but not before some of the uh, gray matter got sucked out. Yep. So or worse. <laughs> so many jokes. <laughs> um, I'll uh, see if I can get Cablis to come back out and see if we can get back on our path. Yep. So, uh, uh, Cavalus comes out as well, and you talking, and kind of shudders a little bit as at the discussion, and uh, kind of points to the path that leads uh, to the south. And as you guys uh, start going along that path, 
Uh, you get into another crossroads and the path and uh, enter the next district. And the path continues, uh, continues, it kind of forks to the west and then forks and then uh, uh, southwest and then southeast. As she's kind of looking at it, she points over that the southwestern one looks like it's a dead end. Okay. And kind of points you guys to the southeast. And you get and starts to kind of uh, walk along, walk to the southeast. Okay. After a ways, okay. though, you come to a point where she stops, looks out, looks at her map, and kind of shakes her head. And as you look, you see that where, according to her map, it looks like there's supposed to be a crossroad here. However, there's no crossroad. There is a ravine that seems to have formed. It's about 30 feet wide and about 30 feet deep, and it extends uh, left and right into the rock. And uh, across, spanning across the ravine for where the path would normally have gone, you see a rope bridge that it, it crosses that distance. All right, I know this. I look up. Is there a bunch of tendrils hanging from the ceiling? <laughs> I don't know, but we're going to take our quick mid mid session break, and when we come back, we'll address crossing the bridge and see what see what happens next. So, thank you everybody for hanging out with us. Hope you're enjoying it for the Sunday morning, and stick around. We'll be right back in just about ten minutes or so. Enough time to stretch, grab coffee, do all those things. Be right back. Hey, we're back. <laughs> good break. Everybody had a good break. <sighs> Yeep, yeep, Everybody yeep. in the chat still with us? Hope you are. Be awesome. We'll see what happens. Alrighty, oh. guys. So, where we left on the break is you had just come into this next district. It's all accounts. It looks like it's a, a residential type thing. The orientation has shifted a little bit from some of the other ones you've passed through, but all of the little offshoots and whatnot and the main paths. Uh, and you have come to a point where there appears to be a ravine that seems to stretch. Uh, left and right uh, it's about 30 feet wide it appears to be about 30 feet um 30 feet deep uh from what you can tell and there is a a rope bridge that seems to be spanning the distance huh nope so we can see the bottom it's only 30 feet yeah you can see hmm. the bottom okay that's not no. too terrible you said there was like loose, so this has been created, like there's loose rock and stuff around? Yeah, there's a bit of loose rock, loose rock around from the sides. It's a pretty, it's a pretty sheer kind of drop. Um, it's just, it's, it's this, it's the fact that it's here. So for Kabbalah, she's looking at it, she's like, you know, kind of frustrated because her map is out of date. It doesn't seem to have this ravine here. So in the time the map was made till now, the ravine is newer. And the bridge there, but it still has its sense of it being uh, having been there a while. They probably haven't come towards this way for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, no. not really. They tend to they, they 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 try to tend to stay, and they get a lot of their resources from the eastern side since they came to the area. So you know, this western side near the lake, they they don't come across here very often. I mean, it's a it's a pretty good hike now from the enclave. So, um, looking at the rope bridge, you're saying it looks like it's pretty old, been here a while? It's been there a while. Worn or serviceable? Uh, roll an investigation. I'm going to try my new die. Um, mm -hmm. any, I imagine the rest of you are probably looking about the area, so probably roll your perceptions. Perceptions. Investigations to that'll be a sixteen. Nothing. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. uh, the rope, the the bridge is serviceable. There are some parts that look like they have a bit of dust and dust on them. Uh, there's a little bit of fraying in places, but most of the uh, most of the boards boards uh, that right. span it are pretty there, and it's 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 fairly wide. It's about it's a, it's about six feet wide. 
What about the uh, the posts, the stanchions that are supporting it? Are uh, they well, well placed? They're pretty, they see they appear to be pretty solid. Uh, all the all the rigging and whatnot, as far as you can tell, appears to be uh, fairly solid. Uh, the bridge has that slight dip to it from uh, as, in the center. Okay. Drag, what'd you get on your perception? Uh, do do do. But it's a moment. I'm just thinking of a little trick that might work. Uh, so there's a bridge there. Nine. Okay. Maybe that I'm not not quite sure. Maybe, maybe not. Well, I got a twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. From what you can see, looking about, Obsidian, what was your dice roll just for the sake of brevity? Well, I have a nine total, but it was a nat one. Okay. <laughs> just want to make sure. It's like when people are like, "Yeah, I don't see anything." I was like, well, "What'd you get?" <laughs> <laughs> I got a nine, but it was a nat one. Okay, um, that's so fair. I see that it's a bridge. It may or may not be made of rope. <laughs> It's made of something that appears to be rope, but it is not rope you know, in, the, in the sense that you're familiar with. Exactly, with my obvious, I don't know what it is. So as Anaria was looking at all the nodding and the rigging looks good. Um, Will, you, as you kind of scan about, yes, you can see the bottom of the ravine. You see um, bits of rubble and you see bits of bones. Uh, some of them large enough that you can tell at 30 feet, it's a bone. I think I found some of the trolls. And uh, looking of, also looking of, and looking about, you see what appears to be bits where there's like webbing caked up in some pot, some spots along the ceiling and along some of the, and along the bones in the ravine. And more spiders. Okay, so at this point, Shrag's gonna be looking around guard. Okay, we're just not liking this bridge. And I'm going to cast Mold Earth, and I'm going to try and drag together rubble from the side of the, the path, and I'm going to start forming it up into five-foot section bridges going across next to the bridge. And what we'll do is move on to the first five-foot section, I'll keep that in place, I'll then spin around the second version of it, move across to that, and then we're basically just going to cross, we'll do these five-foot sections, just pulling the stone up and making it form a footpath underneath us as we go. Well, that's fun. You can, and okay, so you're using the mold, the mold earth can do how big of an area? So the mold earth can do five foot sections at a time, but I can cast the spell multiple times and I can have two um, of the non-instantaneous effects happening. So basically it's like molding the earth into one section, moving on to it and then molding another one. And then as we move off it, bring that round. So, so how are, is it like you're, as you step off, the, the the earth is coming from the edge forward or are you trying to raise up a pillar that you can step on from step to step to step so it's basically it's, it's the all the loose rubble and earth that's around that's being caused by this sort of fissure being created and i'm pulling together all the rubble into like a, a five foot square kind of like sort of um almost like bridge panel okay that basically we can step onto and then what i'll do is i'm then going to gather up some stuff that will then make the next panel we're going to step onto and I'll use the spell again to then move that first panel around. So I'm going to have to in like five foot steps going across. Okay. So basically like one panel, step onto it, generate the next one, call it all up into the panel, move us all onto it, and then bring the next one around using that material in front of us. So I'm keeping the two spells going step by step until we've gone across the 30 foot wide. And so just, essentially just you're so... having floating brick stairs as you walk. Yeah. But kind of like all pulling it's going like one big sort of five foot square panel that we're all in because so there's enough room for all of us to go at the same time. Yeah, I just trying to remember. Does mold earth allow you to suspend it in the air? But it's, it's kind of it's it's touching what's already there. <laughs> well, that's it. Uh, and well, the thing is, this is thirty feet wide, thirty feet high. So yeah, as so you get the mold earth going, it's like you have to have a. You're talking like a, a like a small five foot column oh, that would have to oh, come up to from the you. bottom. Yeah, you mean some company to actually have the panel attached to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, yeah, like, so that's what yeah. I'm trying to see because I'm picturing, I'm picturing, you know, like the 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 cool little hollow step thing where you walk and you, it seems like you're walking on air, but you have something your feet stands on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, is yeah. it the, uh, or is it kind of like from the edge? You have this spindle of earth that's just shooting out as you walk, where you now have this like narrow five foot wide, 
<laughs> little yeah, walkway yeah, yeah, that it's, is it's suspended cool and yeah. over but connected to the end until you yeah, yeah, get yeah. there. Yeah, so I thought, but, I thought you were being like five foot pillars where we'd have to jump from pillar to pillar. It was like, no, it's more like a continuous path. But yeah, it's like it's the, the stone and rubble coming up and then sort of merging up from the ground to create the walkway for us as we go. And and then one of the things too is thinking about our fireball cluster that we had previously, I'm going to recommend that we not do that same thing again. And so I would recommend that Will and uh, Obsidian who have the brooms can go ahead and use the brooms to spread us out and maybe have Shrag and Cablis do the cross on the mold earth portion. And um, because it's only a 30 foot span, I'll go ahead and ask Cablis back for my rope of climbing. And then I'll use my rope of climbing that's gonna magically attach to the stanchions at either end. I don't trust the rope bridge itself, but I'll trust my rope of climbing. Uh, to be able to to get a couple and I'll borrow obsidians and we'll I'll use like a we'll do a um, a hand and foot hold basically and so I'll ah, hold on so to one and uh, yeah exactly you you okay. know exactly what I'm talking about I know exactly what you're talking about one of obstacle my favorite course. things on the obstacle course yeah the O course man <laughs> one of my favorite that's one of the few favorite things from the O course uh oh there you go we got the sheep but we, I don't we, have a rope of climbing Oh, I thought you had one. All right. Well, then what I'll do is I'll use my rope of climbing to create the foot, and then I'll use the the bridge rope to kind of as a as a stabilizer. So the the upper anchors for the rope bridge, hmm? right? Oh yeah, it, yeah yeah yeah. And then my my rope of climbing will be that at the bottom side for the foot. Part. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then the so, hand part, I'll use that, the existing. Yeah. So you have the rope bridge. It's got the side rails and mm -hmm. something along the top to keep the, keep yep. the, keep the span, the stand, the suspension. And right, the so tensions. you're just going to, you're going to walk alongside. Yes. Like I said, I do not trust the rope. I don't trust their rope bridge, but I'll trust my magical rope. I'm just going to use their rope as kind of a balance point, if you will. I like it. Well, I like I'll, it. And I'll I'll float alongside him so he can use the broom as well as a, as another handhold if he needs it. Okay. It's almost like the uh, Boy Scout Monkey Bridge. Only one side's rope, one side's the broom. It's like a kind. A... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> that 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 works. That works. Uh, Shrag, you have an inspiration die you can use at your discretion. Hey, thank you guys. <laughs> I think the DM is telling you you should probably use it now. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm trying to make sure I'm I'm getting the image right in my head of what he's trying to do. The fact that Mold Earth is only a five foot cube at a time. So how is it? How's the how he's spreading that five foot cube and using the five foot cube yeah, yeah. as a time? Because you're using it as a cantrip. Yes, yes. So it's a cantrip casting over. So you can have sort of two non-instantaneous versions of it running at the same time, and then basically you can sort of dismiss them and bring another one up. So it's like a step by step bit so as you say it's like bringing the rubble up to form like a support it's like a panel and as you like putting your foot down it's like the stones are then forming a foot path in front of us as we go supported from underneath so it's making use of all the natural material that's floating around and then making up the the pathway as we go and then when i like, run out of kind of like the extent of that one of the spell is then casting it again to then bring more up to make the next bit and then letting the first one drop and then casting another one okay um, I'm going to offer Cablis a ride on the broom in case she doesn't want to partake on the magical stairway across the ravine. She, she's looking at that, looking at the bridge, look, lo looking at the way what you guys have done, and she's kind of weighing her options. <laughs> Does she just walk across the bridge? She sees, and go? she sees an Aryan, you know, entice the rope to cross and tie itself horizontally. And then uh, testing it and testing and sees you getting prepped on the broom, sees Will getting prepped on her broom, sees Shrag sitting there doing this thing with his hands and and and, and testing the first step in the in this plan, and and she sees that the bridge is the one thing that hasn't been touched, and she's like, I'm gonna take. I'm working against the <laughs> 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 
She's the only one that's going to make it across safely. How much you want to bet? <laughs> that's that's what I was about to guess too. Like, I'll take the bridge. <laughs> so, oh, that's funny. Um, okay, and so I almost hate to say this, but okay. So let's start with uh, with Shrag. I would. Uh, as it comes up because of the distance, I'm going to say there's going to be some some structural integrity with this because of the distance to make your steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. I'm going to say that you're going to need to make an acrobatics. Uh, that will be an 18. Okay. <clears throat> so you, 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 you take your acrobatics and, and you're kind of making a few steps with this with this thing and you kind of get that feeling because if you because you know it's a five foot square but it's not very st stable mm -hmm. so cool. as and it, almost immediately as you try to bring up the next one it, it the previous one kind of crumbles a bit so it's it, it's kind of very hairy and, and nerve-wracking as you're going hey i've got a level of madness i don't care i'm loving this <laughs> it's not the road bridge it's fine <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, Anari, uh, you go ahead and make uh, ac uh, ac acrobatics as well for balancing yourself on the rope with the, the ropes as it is. Acrobatics, you said, right? Yes. It's 21. Okay. So you, 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 guys, are, you guys are coming out. Uh, we'll do this, um, do this three times for every 10 feet. You gotta move. Um, so you first third of the way out. Go ahead and we'll do this. We'll do. We'll go again. Uh, Shrag, go ahead and do yours. Natural twenty twenty seven. You you start to like get this. Okay, I got. I, I'm getting this now. <laughs> so, so you get the next one. Shraggy, you get the I next don't set. Don't spook it, but you're doing really good with that. Don't say that. Wait till he gets across. No, that's why you said it because he wants to tempt fate now. <laughs> he knows exactly why he's done it. <laughs> he's got feather fall. I'm not worried about him. Anari, go ahead and do yours. Twenty-three. All right, you're kind of shimmying along as well. Um, you guys get about halfway through, halfway across the bridge. Um, when, um, Anari, you kind of get a, a, a sense something's off. Will, you kind of get a sense as well, um, because you're kind of watching. You, uh, you two both, um, Anari, briefly out of the corner of your eye, you catch some kind of little bit of movement, and Will starts to look about. And you you go you notice that uh, in the, along the along parts of the ravine you see there are movement. Um, one of the shapes is a little bit larger than the others, and it looks like it's 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 reaching back and draw and and drawing a bow. Uh, I will throw a guiding bolt at it. All right, go ahead and roll for attack. Wow, I was going to go to bed on the wrong side this morning. Got him bolts to the face. <laughs> <laughs> he was reaching for his bow to put it on the ground. That's only an 11. 11 does not hit. However, what? the impact causes a bit of a flash of light and you you see a fairly familiar form of an arachnid body and a humanoid top half drawing a bow drawing the bow and uh getting ready to release it i'll uh get the drift globe do the command word for the daylight okay and light up that space nice Actually, it wouldn't necessarily be that space. Let me make sure I've got, yeah, 60 foot sphere. So it would light up that space then. Do you It'll have, you, the have you been having the drift globe drifting with you this entire time? Cause I haven't heard you say that you have. 
No, and I didn't make the assumption. So it's in your no. back. Yeah. And you're suspended on your kind of. It would be into like a pouch, not necessarily on the in the backpack. So I'll pull it out of a belt pad, uh, belt pouch and call okay. it, do the command word. All right. So I'll, I'll let you have it because your perceptions are your passives are so high. You can you can get the drop on. So kind of goes I'll help in. Him get it out of his bag. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, the the drift globe, and again, because we've had these issues and I know we're going to need light in the underdark, I would not have put it in the backpack. I would have had it somewhere easily accessible. That's yeah. fair. So you give it the command word and it does what again? So I'm going to I'm going to use the daylight one this time instead of just the light, because okay. it's again, we've had encounters with the uh, driders before. <clears throat> um, so it says a 60 foot, uh, 60 foot radius sphere of light spreads out from the point that you choose within range. The sphere is bright light and sheds dim light for an additional 60. Um, so. Okay. It's the daylight uh, spell. Basically. Daylight. So, all right. And I need to mark that off on equipment for one Let's use see, for one, the drift globe. Four. D8 for funsies. Alrighty. So, uh, as you, it's Will's guiding bolt lights up the area, uh, uh, Anari's drift globe comes in there and lights up, uh, causes the drider to lose, to lose his uh, focus on the shot and uh, fires an arrow toward Obsidian, but it misses. <clears throat> it kind of sails oh. wide. The hell was that? And uh, that would be, and so that would be a good time for initiative. Okay. And I was gonna say, we're, we're about 20 feet across at this point, correct? Yeah, you're about halfway. So you're more like, you're, you're kind of at that 15 foot, 15 foot mark, cause it's about 30, it's 30 feet wide. So you're up halfway. So you've got a 30 foot drop and 15 to either side, and then another 15 to 20 above. So. All righty, so. Obsidian, what's your initiative? 15. 18? Anari? 15. 15. Huh? 15. One five. 15, okay. Anari? 30 20 because I forgot and used DD Beyond instead of my new physical dice I was going to try, but still dirty 20. <laughs> try? Uh, 16. And Will? 21. Alrighty, top of the initiative uh, with Will. What do you wish to do? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, she froze up a little bit, didn't she? Yep, she did. I'm going to guiding try to bolt. guiding bolt him again. Guiding bolt again. Alrighty. Please. Oh, that should hit. That's a 20 something. That will hit. Okay. So that's 12 radiant damage. And right. he is now glowing and the next attack will be at advantage. Alrighty. Next up is Anari. Well, since I'm on the bridge, Probably. Oh, Will, do you want to move at all? Uh, yeah, towards the drider on my broom. Okay. So you start to, to descend to... down. Yeah, okay. I want to try to kind of capture its attention so it doesn't try to attack my friends who are perilous, perilously balancing on things. That that's fair. Move. We got I'm trying to remember. We got that. So you descend down. Um, how close do you want to get? It's using. A bow, right? Yes. Oh, uh, 
I don't know if I want to keep my distance or if I want to close the distance. Keep the distance? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep my distance. I'm going to stay like, uh, try to stay like 30 feet from it, but try to put myself between it and Anarian and Shrag. Okay. All right. So you're kind of, you kind of positioned where if he wants to shoot his bow again, he, uh, oper- the opportunity is you, not the rest of the party. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Anari. So with the light now, um, how many do we see? Oh yeah. Is uh, it just you, the one? you see, you see two driders uh, in the in the in the ravine. One Same had hit, one 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 is the they're they're both kind of they're one is with Will, the other one is on the opposite side. Okay. So like as you kind of survey around and see you've got a drider on either side, you also see four giant spiders, two on either side. Okay. And they so and, and they're starting they're starting to kind of crawl up and get into a get into a better position. So essentially Drider and two spiders on either side of the ravine yes. moving upward. Okay. Well the driders um, are both stationary with bows. Okay. The two the, the, the two, spiders, the spiders, are, spiders are the ones that are starting to move the flank. Okay. Uh, question about order of operations. Of course. Uh, so we're approximately fifteen feet from the other edge or the other side. Yes. So movement. Uh, I could take my movement to get to this side mm-hmm. and then take an attack action, correct? Yes. And as a free one, I'll have you do your acrobatics again because you're you're still trying to shimmy across. Okay. Um, no problem there. And uh, then I, that's, that is what I will do is uh, I will go ahead and cross over. All right. And then I will take a uh, I will take a uh, ranged attack against the uh, the drider that's aiming at Will. All right, go ahead and do your acrobatics. Plus, that is going to be a twenty six. Okay, you're able to make you you get across, and then you can make one attack. Only one. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a nat twenty. Hey. On which drider? The one, the one the, that Will is focusing on, and you sent the globe toward, or the one that's on the opposite or the opposite side? Well, I didn't send the globe toward it. The sixty radius okay. would would light up that space, so it doesn't have to go towards it. Okay. Um, but so both yeah, of them are, both of them are caught in the light. It's just one. There's one closer to Will because we'll put herself in a position to be its target of opportunity. Then and there's one on the opposite side. And that's what I was gonna say. So if I understood correctly, the one that was aiming at will is on the side that we came from, correct? No, because you're crossing the ravine. So if you're crossing, since you're crossing north-south, uh-huh. these are these are kind of east-west. You have a drider on the east, a driver on the west. In the ravine. They're in, in the, the ravine. Of the ravine. At the bottom of the ravine. Okay, I, I had understood they're on the sides. Okay, so they're on, okay. Then actually I'll go ahead and, and target uh, the one that, that uh, Will didn't take the guiding bolt shot at. Okay, that 20 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll okay. damage. And so um, Max is going to be uh, eight and so D8. Fingers and toes. That is going to be eight. And longbow is four, 12, 16. That's 22 points of magical piercing damage. Nice. Ooh, nice. All righty. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, we have the spiders. I was just looking at the D&D Beyond overlay. I was like, when did Shrag lose one hit point? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the four spiders crawl are, are decide to ascend uh, both sides of the ravine. Uh, using their movement, uh, they get... Um, <clears throat> crossing in, crossing up. They get just shy of the 
of the of the top and then they uh and then they use their dash to get up on either on either side of the ravine and make their way to crawl across the uh the bridge so anari you have a spider that is now in melee at the start of your next turn uh, for everyone, everyone else who hasn't made it across yet, you see there's the spiders have are on the are on the edges of the ravine, moving toward the uh, moving toward the bridge. And Cabalus is on the bridge, right? Cabalus is on the bridge. She's probably uh, freaking out. Just just a, just just a little bit. She's kind of readying her uh, readying her defenses because she's going to dodge and defend. <laughs> um. But Anari's got a spider right in melee with him, and another one that's well a few, uh, a little over ten feet away, as it's trying to get up and start moving under the bridge. And so that will take their movements. And which brings us to Shragnaz. Okay, seeing that things are getting a little bit heated, and that nobody else has really crossed on this bridge with me. What I'm going to try and do is, instead of doing the five-foot-wide panels uh, for a little bit safer, I'm going to flip it out for a three-foot-wide panel, because I'm only small, but 15-foot long to cover the last bit of distance to the side of the, the ravine. Okay. So, I'm going to call that up to create a slightly narrower path, but longer, and then zip across it to try and get off, so... All right, go and roll your acrobatics. And that is a 14 for a 21. You ju you you get right across, and just as you're getting on that last one, it, it's just starting to crumble because it really just was not that most that stable. But you were able to get her, you're able to kind of dance across it pretty quick. Cool, awesome. Right, so that takes up my movement, and you have a spider right in front of you. Awesome. How? <laughs> um, cool. So uh, that was casting a spell, casting my cantrip to cast that one I've then done my movement um that's me done this round it's all good okie dokie uh brings us to obsidian am I close to Cablus? I uh, relatively you guys are all kind of going at the same pace to, as a group um, you saw, uh, you saw Anari kind of like Anari let go of your broom and just yep. kind of shimmied across as fast as he could so he could draw his bow and fire. Um, Cabinus is on the bridge. You see the spiders on the sides. There's one yep. with melee with Anari, one in melee with Shrag, one point one, uh, kind of in front of Will, and then yep. one that Anari shot at. That's, uh, okay. how far is the one that? Will's at from me. Uh, from you, I'm picturing this as as kind of like you and an Ario are on one side of the bridge going across. Yeah. Shrag and Will were on the opposite right. side of the bridge, and uh, Cabalus was in the middle on the bridge. Right, to have enough room to do the uh, interest the, the the way you were going about this. Yep. So for you, for you, the the Drider would be in front of Will. Uh, she's about 30 feet him. from it so you're you're about you're about 40 45 feet okay. from it and the and the one on the other side how the one far? on the other side is closer to you right it is it is uh just uh, it is just under 30 30 feet at an angle okay so i'm gonna look at tablets i'm gonna say spiders on either end get on the broom and i'll take you over if she says no then i'm going to go after one of the spiders if she says yes, then I'm going to hold my action, the move action, to take her across on the broom. Uh, roll a persuasion with advantage. Just because you make a very ar very good argument on getting on the broom <laughs> as much as she hates flying. <laughs> 21. Come with me if you want to live. She looks on either side. And looks at the broom, and for the briefest moment, you see her weigh her options before she jumps and catches the broom and is kind of hanging by her hands on the yeah. broom. 
and I'm going to make sure I'm holding on to her and and then take her across to safety. Okay. Will, you have and an inspiration set, die you can use at your discretion? Yeah, Thank and you. then set her down, and I'm assuming I don't have an attack action because of all of that. So I guess that will end my turn. You Well, you didn't... Well, yeah, you, you spoke to her, which would be free action. Movement. She jumped, and then you moved, so you would okay. technically still have an action today. To take. Okay. So can I, do I get, uh, so I have a bow, can, do I have a shot at one of the driders? Or? Yeah, you have a shot, you have a, the, okay. you can shoot at the same one Anar shot at, or you can kind of shift a little bit with the last little bit of your movement and shoot at the one in front of Will. So take your pick. Does the one that um, Anarian hit look injured at all? Yes, they're both injured. Um, the one that Anari hit uh, is a little bit more damaged okay. because then you I'm just know shoot. that Anari, when he when he strikes, it's typically not a pleasant experience for whoever <laughs> is on the receiving end. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and just shoot it at um, the one near Will. Okay. That's an that one is glowing, so you have advantage on that attack. Oh, man, I didn't need it. For the crit. 18 and a 14 on the die, so 25. And that she's, hits, still, she's still 30 feet away, right? You said? Yeah, it's still, bow, okay. but it's within bow range. No, no, no. I'm asking for sneak. Oh, attack. no, she's not she in was melee close with enough. It. Yep, yep. That's what I wanted to check. So it's going to be eight, nine points of magical piercing because I used one of my arrows. Fair enough. Okie dokie. This brings us to them, or the two, the, the two driders. <clears throat> The one that um, Will shot her guiding bolt at, um, he kind of he he looks up at Will and kind of grins, and then you feel, and then Will, you feel your your vision kind of go dark as magical darkness just envelops you in that spot that you're hovering. Uh, counterspell. Go ahead. It's counterspell. A third, what level are you casting it at? Just the base level, third level. So if it's third level or lower, it goes away. All right. So as it comes down, and it, it washes over you, and then washes away. Okay. Cool. And the driver is quite quite pissed at that whole revelation. <laughs> The one that's over, oh, the like one that's uh, the one on the opposite side that Anari hit. Uh, he looks up at Anari and kind of waves his hand and drops the magical darkness on Anari. And the darkness is again a fifty, a sixty, sixty foot uh, circumference. So he centers so it on Anari, so it extends fifteen feet in all directions. Um, so if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. the drift globe daylight counteracts the drider's darkness. That's interesting because it depends maybe on which one was cast first. Yeah, with the darkness cancel out the sunlight. Um, creature with dark vision can't see it. A non, -mag non magical light can can't illuminate it. If uh, is magical light, uh, correct? Yeah. So, I believe the daylight spell says that it dispels darkness. That's what I remember. So that's as why it I'm washes over, it, it again, it it'll it will again wash away. The, okay. the drivers are checking. not happy by this revelation. <laughs> They're like, we like unhappy drivers. Very much so. <laughs> So that's the two of them bringing us back to the top of the order with Will. All right. So the one that is glowing. Uh, let's see here. What do I want to do? Uh, is Cablis off of the bridge? Yes, Cablis is on the ledge with Anari and Shrag and the two giant spiders. She, of course, is doing her hide and stay out of things because she doesn't want to get in your way. 
So she's run over to the rock wall and vanished. Excellent. Okay. I will guiding bolt him again, I guess. This one I'm going to do at second level. All righty. Same one you targeted the first time, right? Mm hmm. All and, right. And this one is going to be at advantage. Uh, the advantage was uh, from uh, when Obsidian attacked it. I, so no, you no longer have advantage target. on it. Oh, okay, that's fine. I would rather our rogue get advantage. <laughs> yeah, because if I remembering right, guiding yeah. with guiding bolt, the next attack has the advantage. The next attack roll. Yep. You know what? Then I would have had the sneak attack because I had yeah, advantage you on it. It's <sighs> gotta remember the rules. Go ahead. So that's a twenty-four to hit. That will hit. Roll damage. Terrible damage roll. Uh, 12 radiant damage. All right. And it is glowing again. Sweet. All right. Thanks. Now, now for <laughs> Anari. Hey, Obsidian, go for that one. So um, the spider's in melee, yes? Yes. There's a giant spider in melee range for you. All right. So that is going to be a 23 and 24 to hit. Both hit. Total damage. Okay. And damage is going to be four and hang on one sec. No, no, that's going to be 19 points of piercing damage. Alrighty. It is hurt. You actually go and kind of sever mm -hmm. off as you swing around, sever off two of the legs. And just because I'm going to use one of my first level spell slots to add the divine smite to that. Okie dokie. Boom. That is going to be three, another 10 points. And that is it. That second hit comes down, severing the leg and shooting uh, radiant uh, divine energy all through it, and it just collapses. So that's one Excellent. first level spell slot. Cool. And that is actually I have bonus action, yeah. Um, yeah, you talk How close still... is the second spider? The second one is just about is just over ten feet where Shrag is, engaged in about engaged with Shrag, and then there are two on the opposite side of the bridge, starting to crawl to crawl across the bridge. How far from me? Thirty. Uh, the, the one, one attacking the spider Shrag close is to just Shrag. over ten. Yeah. The ones on the other end of the bridge are thirty feet. All right, so I will cast then on the um, spider close to Shrag. Um, as a bonus action, I'll use uh, Hunter's Mark on it. Okay. Okie dokie. And then move, because I can move yet too, right? Mm -hmm. I'll, move, I'll move toward that spider as well so that I can engage it next round. Go. All right. That one is dead. The next one uh, is the one attack one with Shrag, and it will attack Shrag. Bite. Yep. That is going to be a seven to hit. Close. No. <laughs> Shrag just kind of ducks and weaves, ducks and weaves. Um, the next two, as they uh, come up and they're crawling across, they uh, try to shoot their webbing at uh, at uh, you got at you guys on the ledge. So since there are three of you on the ledge, well, Nari's uh, obsidian is floating, but. Um, Shrag, let's see. Yep. Shrag, Shrag uh, is the target for that. Yep, that's a 12 to hit. So it doesn't hit right, Shrag. So is that? Okay, that's 12 right. to hit with a ranged yeah. attack. Nope, that misses. Okay, second webbing. 
will uh, be targeted toward Obsidian. Yep, that's an eight to hit. That will miss. So able to dodge out of that. And the two of them uh, continue to crawl across to where now they're on the same side as uh, the as Shrag and Anari standing on the ledge. Obsidian is, is floating on his broom off the ledge just a bit. Um, which will bring us to Tregnes. Ah, I shall whip in my rapier and go, ha ha, stab and do a green flame blade on the spider in front of me. Alrighty, go ahead and roll for that attack. Okay, so that is going to be my rapier plus one. Oh, for goodness sake, that's a 13. 13 to hit the spider. Unfortunately, it does not hit. Yeah, I'll blow a raspberry at the spider and um, I'm going to use my, uh, what's it called? My nimble escape to take the disengage action as a bonus action and I shall move 30 foot away from it, but further so like into the area so I'm further away from the, the ravine. I don't fancy getting knocked down now. That is a good call. That, we did that. Okay. That's me. Oh, there was a cheer that came in. I was trying to see if there was a note with the cheer. Oh, actually, sorry to just, I've just realized that I do, I've got, was it a D4 inspiration I got earlier? Yep. Yes, you do. I should use it before I forget it. I, <laughs> that's a one that takes my hit roll to a 14. 14 <laughs> does hit. <Hey>! Thank <laughs> you, Hillary. You're welcome. <laughs> Cool. In which case, then sorry about that, Scoob. I suddenly just realized I had that. So that's going to be. Uh... I didn't move on to the next turn, so you're still you're still there. Cool. Good man. Thank you for that. In which case, that is going to be nine points of magical piercing damage. Oh, what uh, was the total damage again? Uh, so that's nine so far for magical piercing, and flame blade roll gives an additional two points of magical fire damage, and then because I did hit. What I will do is, and there is another, there is another creature close enough. You know, oh. you actually have as you as you're kind of looking with that and light that up. You see, you have two spiders, actually three spiders on the ledge. You and Anari are kind of in the mix of it. You've got oh. once you've got two spiders you can reach. Anari's got three spiders he can reach. Excellent. <laughs> we, this we like. Um, so in which case that's going to be on the other one will be then d8 plus four be five points of fire damage on the other spider all righty five points of damage on the third one okay yep. and then i'll do that move out um using the bonus action bonus action disengage yeah so i'll move 30 foot further inland as it were all right so you kind of duck underneath crawl under get up and back away yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not sending a big gap. Far too much fun with that. All right, this brings us to Obsidian. Okay, so the one engaged with Will, can I get to him within 50 feet? Yes. So I'm going to use the movement of the broom for, of 50 feet to get down there to him. All right, that gets you right in melee. Yep, so it is a 14 plus 9, which is a 23 to hit. That will hit. Roll damage. Uh, 5, 10, 13, And you did 16. roll that with advantage because it's yeah, yeah. glowing. Yeah, I had a 5 and a 14, so plus 9. Gotcha. Uh, so 10, 16, green flame blade is 18, plus 6 is 24 points of magical piercing. 24, all right. It's still standing. It is still standing, huh? So, well, let's take a swipe. All right, take that swipe. Ah, oh, 15 plus 7 is 22. That will hit. For an extra six points of non-magical piercing. Okay. You don't have a magical sword? I do, but not my second sword. Oh, uh, okay, okay. All righty, so. I was so confused for a moment. <laughs> what have we been Two doing hands. wrong? <laughs> Two hands. <laughs> That's fair. Alrighty, so that Drider now has his attention on Obsidian. Um, Bring it. 
Coming in. Let's see. Okay. Three attacks inbound. It's Ben Broughton. It has Ben Broughton. I like that. <laughs> All righty, so Let's see, fifteen for the first hit. Unfortunately, that will miss. Sixteen for the second hit. Unfortunately, that will miss. Sixteen, and then seventeen for the third hit. Unfortunately, that will also miss. All right, so with this long sword and anger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, it looks like Inari is going to get a natural 20 on his next dice roll. Oh, that's going to be nice. So much smite. <laughs> yeah, it's common. <laughs> Which brings us to the next Drider who from his distance is, let's see. Man, he has a, he can't see Shragnaz. Uh, Obsidian, or Anari is kind of surrounded by spiders. Will is floating and Obsidian is floating. So he's going to choose between two of you. And since Will is next in the initiative, Will, tell me odds or evens. Odd. Yoki? Obsidian is going to take three bow shots. Sorry, buddy. It's all good. Okay. First bow shot is an eight to hit. Second bow uh -huh. shot is a 16 to hit. Third bow shot is a 24 to hit. The last one will hit. One out of six ain't bad. Nope, I'm not complaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, there it is. Has four points of piercing damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Con save. 17 on the die, plus four, 21. All right, 21 does save. Um, still going to take a little bit of poison damage, but the effect of the poison does not affect you. Which is in a which is five points of poison damage. Okay, okay. Alrighty, this brings us back to the top of the order with Will. Can I turn oh, around hey. and laugh at him and ask him if that's all he's got? <laughs> <laughs> he sneers at you. <laughs> Bring it, baby. So the one that Obsidian and I are fighting, how's he looking? Uh, he's uh, looking a little rough. The other one is now charging forward because he was taunted and pissed. <laughs> right. I like it. Well, to try to eliminate one before the other arrives, I am going to fly towards the one we've been attacking. Okay. And uh, get into melee with him. Okay. And I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds. Okay. Ugh, it's a 10 to hit. Then does not hit. Nope. I'm pretty sure even with inspiration, it's not going to work, but let's try. If I get a four, it'll work. No. That was a one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, even, with a, even with a four, it wouldn't have worked, but I appreciate the effort. Oh, I thought a 14 hit it. <laughs> no, spiders, 14 will hit the, the spiders. Ah, okay, not got it. The, uh, well, the, dry, the driders, as you Drider. get in there and look, you see they have like chainmail on <laughs> cool totally just wasted my inspiration but you know whatever <laughs> it's all good all right this brings yes, up uh, glad i could help glad i could help um i will for my bonus action um 
touch one of the beads on my necklace and a little bead of light floats over to obsidian and you will get some healing. Oh, thank you. So that's a second level cure wounds. <laughs> well, you have ones. <laughs> you have another inspiration die that you can use. Yeah, that doesn't help with rolling cure wounds, though. <laughs> I had only ones. taken nine, and you gave me seven back, so I'm 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 more that's than five. Thank you, thank you. Stupid <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've already been integrated. No more. No, got to stop using that thing. Yeah, I, I think I'm switching to my my tray. <laughs> That's my turn. Just that feel of dice in your hand. I just gotta say, it's nice. No, it's so much better than clicking a little thing on the screen. Clacky um, math rocks, is that what they're called? See, and that's <laughs> my my problem is with clacky math rocks, you actually have to use math, and I really stink at math. <laughs> so I really like the click and it calculates it for me. Um, but I'll find ways to work around it. So D D Beyond is the clickety without the clackety. Exactly. Oh that's we'll, we'll get better at math together, John. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not great at it either. <laughs> oh, it's Oh, yeah, fun, fun. Was, five I, ones out of 12 rolls wow oh, that's bad I, I, wow. the other day i was telling you guys i was my son's uh got a group he plays with and he wanted to make a new character he was working on making a new character and we were going through how the formulas and took we are while we're talking D and and talking formulas to calculate ranged attacks melee attacks uh and in all the other aspects of the sheet it was a great opportunity to point out hey it's all variables and operators mm -hmm. and getting and using that as an as a thing to help them understand variables and operators it does it, yep. it doesn't matter <laughs> so. at which point goes what you mean i'm doing maths for the fun of it and enjoying it and you're like yeah welcome to the evening yeah one, one, once he got away from you thinking that variables have to be a single letter and could not just be like a word <laughs> Yeah. But uh yeah. So all right. Uh uh Will that completes your turn. Anari, you're up. You have a target rich environment. I certainly do. <laughs> um so I am going to use the uh Nat 20 that was given to me and deal out uh essentially 40 points of damage to the first target. Uh which, which would define be... first target because you have three targets. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the first target that gets the the uh, nat twenty damage is going to be the least damaged spider. Good call. That one's dead. Okay. The second one uh, is it close enough to shrag uh, within five feet so that I could get my sneak? Uh, yes, because the one that you struck is the one that came up on. Is, uh, uh, picture the bridge and them crawl yep. on the bridge. Okay. left and right as you look at it uh-huh the one that is on the the one that you hit was the one closest to you because it came on that side of the bridge okay the other one came on the other side and is right next to shrag that one's right. been damaged by flame and then the one he stabbed with his raper has been a little bit more damaged and the one that i had marked with hunter's mark is the one that's going to take the second um, okay attack and that's one was close to shrag yes so that one should be in within sneak okay excellent i just wanted to make sure yes um so it is going to get my hunter's mark damage uh sneak attack damage i'm also going to use another first level spell slot for a divine smite on that one all right stop um, right there what is the minimum damage for that combination uh minimum damage i need the minimum damage for uh, that combo with the rolls it would have been Eight. Uh, twelve points. Okay. Uh, any? Do you minimum. still need to roll all the dice? Well, if it kills it, no. <laughs> no, you, you didn't. That minimum okay. is not quite high enough. All right. So then there's there's another. Oh, actually, sorry, I miscounted one. Sneak the eight. Yeah. So um, with it'd be uh eighteen minimum. Eighteen will kill it. Okay. So, well, I won't worry about the uh, overkill. 
<laughs> I will, however, I will, however, sh uh, shift my hunter's mark from the dead one to the last live one, just in case. That's fair. And that will end my turn. All righty. That leaves just the one spider. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Shrag, you're next in the initiative, so evens or odds? Evens, let's go. All right, it attacks you. That was off. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying oh. I'm odd, Shrag? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, Shrag was trying to make himself not odd. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. All right, it's all so good. So a bite attack from the spider is an 18 to hit Shrag. That will hit, so I'm going to go <laughs> and cast shield. There you go, blow. Big raspberry at the spider. <laughs> is blowing a raspberry a verbal or a somatic component? Uh, of this particular spell, it, it is the verbal components of it. <laughs> That's amazing. The somatic part is just the is is just the, um, the noise that comes out along with it. <laughs> Alrighty, so that does that attack. Next up is the Shragnaz. Okay, I am actually going to use my disengage move first and move 30 foot away from the spider. Um, I'm then going to wave my my rapier really, really like sort of fluently, like rah, 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 rah. I'm going to cast my bolt at him. <laughs> uh, that's a 15 to hit. Okay, um... In order to get up to you to bite you, Shrag, it would have had to leave Anari's threat circle. Anari, give me an attack of opportunity. I can certainly do that. Do it. D20 coming up. That is going to be 15 plus. Uh, that would be a 24. All righty. That will and hit. So 1d8 is going to be a 5. That is going to be 15 points of damage. That is it. So your hit weakens it as it charges on Shrag, and then as he does the thing and hit, it finishes it off. Amazing. Nice. Huzzah! <laughs> this brings us to Obsidian. Yes. So, so I have you have Will me. right next to you, engaged with a Drider. You have another Drider charging up. From behind. How far away from he is us? Is he from us? Uh, the one charging? Yes. He's not in melee yet. He, the, I know, he, but is he within 30 feet? Yes, he would be within 30 feet. Yes. Okay. So it's a dirty 20 to cast green flame blade and hit the one in front of me for 27 magical piercing. Okay. And I'm going to fire off a whales from the grave to the guy behind me for 11 points of necrotic damage. All righty. So, so you strike it, and then as you strike, this kind of ghastly um, specter wash, washes out from the drider over to the other drider, and then you and then just the 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 inner the necrotic uh, webbing of pain just washes over it. Come on, baby, let's go, let's dance. All right, this brings us to the first drive. Did I just hear David Bowie right there? <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so. With the big um, bad rider pissed off. I'm trying well, to evens or odds? Odds. Come on, I'm trying to taunt him enough to take it to hit me. All right, all all three attacks go toward Obsidian. <laughs> Apparently odds is the way to go today. <laughs> Odd is always the way to go. That's what Drake right. says. First attack is a 12 to hit. Second attack is a 17 to hit. Third Miss. attack is a 23 to hit. One hit. Righty. And I'm going to use a reaction, to uh, uncanny dodge reaction to half the damage. Okay. Oh. Well. 
That is going to be nine points of slashing damage. Is that and half, a, or is that the one I need to half? That's the full value, so you'll have to half that half. to All right. uh, full to half. Yeah, also need you to make a constitution saving throw. Yeah, I just rolled a 12 plus four is a 16. All right, make the save, and you okay. you'll just take the poison damage, which is going to be eight poison this time. Eight as in the number eight. Yes. Okay. All righty. Let's uh, bring up for the next rider that charges up. I'm going to laugh in his face and call him a wimp. All right. I'll let you pick evens or odds this time. Evens. Come Will, on. you get all three what, all three sword hey. attacks. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, he tried. That's what I get for saying something. Don't acknowledge it. Don't acknowledge it. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Okay, first attack is an 8 to hit. Second attack is a 13 to hit. Third attack is a 21 to hit. Um, that would hit, but I'm going to shield, so it will miss. Alrighty. Rem remember the verbal component. Oh, <laughs> 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 All the frustration in the world. Alrighty, brings us back up to the top of the order. With Will. You all don't deserve to be called spiders. You all mm. suck. Alright, Will, you're up. Or did you freeze um, on us again? Okay, the only the oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, the only one that's left is the drider. Uh, no, the, both driders are left because neither one is dead. <laughs> Dang it! The one behind us is still alive. That's right. Well, the one I'm behind busy. you is is pretty spry and pretty upset. The one in front, the one in front of you that you've been guiding bolting, it's uh, it, it's looking a little rough. And I'm in melee with that one now. You're in melee so... with both. Uh, I don't like this idea of being in a spider sandwich. So I'm going to turn to the one that we've been engaging with guiding bolts. And I'm going to, I don't know if this is going to work because they probably have a really good con, but I'm going to attempt to cast blight on it. So I hope I put my hand on it and the initial light is this soft like sunset kind of glow and then it just immediately warps into this like dark swirling green mass that spreads across his chest so that's a con saving throw for it all right what's the dc 16 makes the save okay still takes half damage okay what's the damage that's dice uh, 29 total, so 15, 14? Uh, 14. All righty. Yep. Necrotic damage. Yeah, a, not liking that. Not liking that at all. All right. And so, Dan, have you taken more damage? Yeah, but I'm all right. I'm not, okay. I'm not that bad. Okay. That's my turn then. I'll just stay there and back up my friend. Alrighty. Next up is Anari. All the spiders are dead. You still hear combat in the ravine. Okay, in the ravine. So um, am I close enough to move to where I can get uh, bow shots? Yeah, you don't have to move far. Okay. Um, then I will do so. All right, so you move up, you move up to the edge, line up your bow looking down, you see you see Will and Obsidian uh in the center with a drider on either side. Okay. Swords out, double-handed holding just wailing pure out. anger slashing back and forth. Okay. So which is the healthiest looking drider? Uh that would be the one that <laughs> is uh behind uh, Will and Obsidian. You see, Will is Will had just done the uh, bl the the in the blight on the one in front of her. So okay. Her hand is still recoiling back. Got it. The other one is the one that um, Obsidian Obsidian is kind of looking at and taunting. So I will make my uh, I will make my two bow attacks uh, 
to that uh, particular drider Alrighty. is appearing to be the least damaged. Yep. Um, and so I will uh, shift my uh, hunter's mark to it. All right. And make an attack uh, 22 to hit. 22 does hit. On, on the first. All right. Okay. So the first uh, damage, it's going to take um, 20 points of piercing damage. Nice. And then uh, he still has the hunter's mark on him. Uh, so the second attack will be an 18. 18 does not hit. Okay. So he won't take any additional damage then. Alrighty. And that will be it for me for now. All right. This will bring us to Shragnaz. Hockey dockey. Um, move up to the edge then so we can see the fight. And I think I'm going to focus the one that Aaron's been going for with the uh, draw the back. And we'll keep it nice and simple and go for a firebolt. All righty. The uh, same one that Anari hit or the one that Will was just touching? No, the one that Anarin's been going for. It's okay. A, I, I wouldn't worry too much. That was going to be a 19, and the dice just flopped over, and it just didn't. So, yeah, that was a 10 in total. No. I can yeah. hit. No. 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 Yeah, that's just me. Yeah. So, moving swiftly on. Next. <laughs> Next up is Obsidian. So... Going to cast Green Flame Blade at the one in front of me, and it's a 26 to hit. That will hit. It is 22 magical piercing on him. Okay. Uh, seven more Green Flame Blade to the guy behind me, and then I'm also going to do another Whales from the Grave where he's going to take eight more necrotic, so he has a total of 15 total with the flame blade and the necrotic Alrighty, both are still standing and since i have a second oh where's the die there it is uh so take the second sword out this is probably going to miss yeah that's going to be a 12 to hit all righty and that will end my turn okay so um the one that you got the whale, the one that you sent the whales in the green flame, he's going to retaliate on you. Okay. And uh, send his attacks on you. So three slashes with that sword, double handed. Not good, not good at all. First one is an eight. Second one is a nine, is a is a seventeen, and the third one is an eighteen. <laughs> the eighteen does hit. The eighteen does hit. My AC, yeah, meets it, beats it. My AC is eighteen. Alrighty, so. But I am going to look at him and go. Do you need help with how to use a sword? Oh, just the burn. He just sneers, and you, you uh, could only will... hit one out of like eight attacks. Or... You don't deserve to even be here. <laughs> Didion's pissed. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to rile him up. <laughs> yeah, it's working. He is he is thoroughly upset. And he deals uh five points of slashing damage, and you need to make another con saving throw. 17 on the die plus four is 21. And of course I'm gonna uncanny dodge him to take half of it just to tick him off even more. <laughs> and three points of poison damage on that on so, that one. So it's half of the slashing, but not half of the poison, correct? Uh, the uncanny dodge, yeah. It's the slashing so, and then the poison. But so you don't get the poison condition or any of the effect. <laughs> right, right. So it was a total of five then, okay. Okay. Uh, which brings us the other Drider, who will even or odd? Odd. It's going to go after Obsidian. You too? I hope you're better at it than he is. Oh. 
<laughs> uh, first one is a 10 to hit. The next two are 21s. Okay, those will hit. Two cons, right? Two times. Actually, I'm going to make it just one time because for the second hit, I am, my sentinel shield pops out and the hit comes onto me. Okay. All right. So and you can only do one reaction per round, right? Not it's not a reaction per turn, or is it a reaction per? It's turn? a reaction per round. Round. Okay. So, are you? Which one are you deflecting? The first one or the second one? Uh, the second one. I think is okay. what I said. Obsidian, uh, you're going to take. 12 points of slashing damage from the first hit, and I need you to make a con saving throw. Yeah. 18 on the die plus 4 is 22. All right. So you take 4 points of poison damage uh, with that. Okay. All right. And the second hit, which will hit the Sentinel Shield. That is going to be... Uh, 11 points of slashing damage to Will, and I need you to make the con saving throw as well. I rolled a 21. Okay. So you just take eight points of poison damage, but do not get the poison condition. Okay. Okay. So after this, can I look around at all the bones and go, this all can't be from you, because you all <laughs> suck at battle. Who, who put all these bones down here for you? <laughs> so salty. I'm loving this. Come on, doesn't the rage give them disadvantage at some point? Can't they be so mad at some point they can't see straight? Do you really want definitely... me to add rage to the to the mix? <laughs> He's already there. He can't hit anything for top of it. Just like <laughs> But they're also bleeding and they've got this necrotic damage. They're uh, they're mad and they're just Wildly swinging back and forth. I mean, <laughs> so this brings us back to the top of the order with Will. Okay, so we've still got one on us, right? That one still hasn't died. Nope, neither one have died. Dang it! Two on us. How's he looking? Uh, the 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 one that you did your your touch to. He's not in a good spot. I mean, dry, dry, dr dark elves are, are inherently dark skinned. His skin looks even darker and cracked and just from that necrotic uh, webbing that runs over it. He's oh. not looking good. Okay, then I am going to cast inflict wounds on him at second level. Okay. That's an 18 to hit. 18 does not hit. Dang it! Then I don't have inspiration anymore, do I? Uh, no, I believe you used it. Okay, cool. Well, you used it, and then you got one back from Sakura. Oh! About 20 minutes ago, so you should still be good. Okay, and that I makes it a 22 to hit. 22 will hit. Yay! Thank you, Sakura! What's your minimum damage on a second level uh, inflict wounds? Oh, I, I already rolled my damage and I rolled okay. really well. It's 28 radiant damage. Yeah, it's dead. Sweet. And then cool. I uh, touch another bead on my necklace and give some cure wounds goodness to my friend Obsidian. And that is also another horrible cure wounds roll. So that is eight. <laughs> eight points of healing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to turn around and go, you, you know, you're next. Because <laughs> uh, you suck. Yeah, you suck. Nari, you're up. <laughs> All right. So uh, the only one left is the one that's still got my hunter's mark, correct? Yes. All right. And um, <clears throat> I have rolled a uh, 24 to hit 24 will hit okay and that damage with uh oh is and they're 
both uh, Obsidian and uh, yes. Will are within five. Okay. So with the Hunter's Mark, with the sneak attack and the damage, it's going to take 16 points of uh, piercing damage. Okie dokie. And then on uh, the second attack, I got a 19 to hit. 19 just hits. Okay. And on that one, it is going to take... Uh, um, oh, wait, that um, Sneak and Hunters is only once, so it's only going to take uh, eight points of uh, piercing. Alrighty. Still standing, but definitely not in good shape. And that will be me. All right, Shragnaz, you are up. Ah, uh, okie dokie. Um, Ashley, Shad, do you, do you get advantage on these guys at the moment? Uh, my next one, I will. Oh, uh, okay. That's a shame. I was going to pull something funny, but that's fine. Um, so I'm going to cast Magic Missile at second level. And I'm going to send two missiles into one and two into the other. Uh, there's only one alive. Okay, well, it's going to get all four then. <laughs> all right. Uh, 10 points of magical force pummeling damage. Okay. And I'm going to add to it Fury of the Small and add another 8 points of damage to it. It's still standing. Goodness gracious, this thing is Oh, dark. wow. And Obsidian and Will, you see these flashes of of light just pummel it. <laughs> with the last one being a little, little, little exceptionally brighter as it hits. So that brings us to Obsidian's turn. So I'm going to look at him and ask him if he's had enough. <laughs> just sneers and readies his sword to swing again. Twenty-five. <laughs> to hit with green flame blade for 26 magical piercing. And how do you want to do it? <laughs> I'm, I told you you suck at this. It's so glad. I'm so glad you're not going to be around to deal with anymore and I'm going to just chop his head off. <laughs> you swing you you swing around on that broom and just head comes right off. You hear the cling of the sword as the, as they connect. And the flame cauterizes the wound as the drider drops. I'm going to pick through the bodies to see if there's even anything worth taking. <clears throat> as as Shad's doing that, I'm going to use Mold Earth. And it's going to be like, it's like sort of picture, like this mural thing is going to like appear on the wall. And it's going to be like a drider in like a cartoon, kind of like sort of chalk style drawing, fighting a little capped backy kind of image. And it's going to have underneath, it's going to be, have like Team Shadow Watch 1 dried as nil. And it's going to sit there on the wall for an hour. And I need oh. you all to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, wonderful. Oh, God, why? Plus three from Inari. Uh, he's at the uh, top of to the ledge, on, 30 feet above you. you. You have to be within 10 feet, so I don't think so. Um, I probably within ten feet because Nerin and I have both been on the top. Oh, of the that's ridge true. Shooting down, so I think that, that would put me on twenty nine. Yeah. Okay. And you said Dex, right? Yep. Eleven. Twenty five. Obsidian. Twenty two. Okay. So as you guys stand there and Obsidian, you're picking through and and looking about, and Trag is doing the drawing and. Will all of a sudden notices that purple flames just seem to start appearing off of her body. <laughs> and as you and, and as you look about, you see standing on the other side of the ravine, looking over, is another pair of driders and another quartet of spiders. And that's where we'll end for this week. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Horrible. laughs> Yeah, that's what's coming. I have a feeling. Yep. Dang it. Okay. All righty then. Ah. Well, Obsidian's going to have some more fun mentally tormenting some more driders. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, actually. 
I wonder if they were just standing there watching us the whole time, just like, wow, they really do suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm actually more impressed with that than chuffed with it, because it actually means that someone's going to get to see the cartoon drawing as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we might get to add another notch to our scoreboard. Actually, though, you got to make it Driders 2, or uh, Dark, us 2, You got to watch zero. 2, Drider 0. Yeah. And yeah, actually, if you want to throw in this... how many we yeah. fucking fought the last time. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, from the first go-round. Oh, yeah. Then our score is way higher. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because we killed three driders last time, two driders this time, so it should be five to nil. <laughs> yeah, the thing is they, they probably wouldn't know that unless we're fine. Word has traveled though, hasn't it? They, they hey, may well be aware of it. And not only that, but we don't care what they think. We're keeping score on our side. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So much, uh, just Nat opens up her, it opens up a little book that she has, and you see her kind of put a stamp. <laughs> and she kind of shows it to Shrag the, and the, the Shrag X sees on the it just, just like the old school fighter pilot like deal yeah. Yep. Yeah. Drider stamps and spider stamps Love it yeah, I love it, I love it so much Oh, uh, that's cool But uh, thank you everybody for hanging out watching with us this morning uh, It's been a lot of fun Shout out to Sirenscape for the background music and soundboards uh, Shout out for Stream Beats for our before Free and end show kind of kind of music and uh thank you to the cast for uh opting to do a sunday morning game session seemed to be a lot of fun uh of thank fun. you for all the bits and everything you guys cheered it's awesome and amazing uh enjoy the rest of your day be safe and we will see you next week and if you enjoyed this content you want to support the studio the best way to do that is to go over to patreon.com slash scuba studio uh, consider being a patron, get some behind the scenes stuff, comment on things, all the, all that good good uh, fun, and your support is greatly appreciated. It takes resources to do this, and you guys help keep it going. Um, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night over on Realm Smith's uh, YouTube channel for Season 3 of Into the Mist. The uh, kicking off again, so uh, all the fun shenanigans with that. I believe they have a giveaway of some type they're doing. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna feign ignorance, just, even though I know exactly what the giveaway is. But just a small one. <laughs> uh, enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and we will see you on our next episode. Bye, everybody. Take care, everybody. Bye.